Hey look, that's the adopted son of the Haven Glow family. What is he doing here? Wasn't he in Vera City for his engagement with the young miss of the Malin family? Didn't you hear that he was rejected by her father because he has no innate talent? I wonder why the Haven Glow family adopted this trash then. Rio was walking toward the auditorium for the first day of his school. He was hearing such harsh comments since he had come back from Vera City but it didn't affect him much. He was a very good-looking young boy. A single gaze at him would make the innocent hearts of the young maiden beat frantically. He had crimson-colored hair and had sea-green eyes while his eyebrows were sword-like. He was 184 centimeters, taller than many of the students around him. He took a seat in the last row of the auditorium. It was almost full since he came late but the headmaster still hadn't arrived. Students were wearing their gray uniforms and waiting for the headmaster. A few minutes later, a gray-haired elderly man appeared. He had a mustache that curved down around both sides of his mouth and connected to his beard which only covered his chin. Almost like a French-cut beard walked onto the stage. His neatly styled hair was slick with a light shimmer. He seemed to be someone very powerful with a unique aura. He didn't use a mic and boosted his voice using mana so it would sound all around the auditorium, today is the day you will all be sent to the land of Azuras for the first time in your life. You have joined the military school as you all know it became necessary to start your three years of training before you become part of society. As the Davrix race invaded our planet 200 years ago, we had no choice but to fight them. Our strength paled in comparison and we lost even though we were greater in numbers. However, our scientists made a breakthrough in technology and we were able to build a portal that led us to the land of Azuras which gave us the strength to contend against the Davrix race as we found the magical beasts that gave us powerful skills. Scepter ad Davrix race had taken over one-third of the Earth's region and they would have expanded their borders if we didn't find this treasure land that allowed our strength to grow. Because of the land of Azuras we were able to stop the Davrix race from taking over our Earth. But, we are barely equal to them in strength and we don't know their true strength. They might start a war again so we need to be prepared. To save humanity, and not let them steal more from us we need the power to face them. So we will give you training that will help you grow and help the human race fight against the Davrix race, magic students started whispering to themselves as they heard that humans were still barely equal to them. They grew up thinking that the human race had already surpassed the Davrix race but they were kept in the dark. Headmaster continued, today, you all will go through the portal and become familiar with the land of Azuras. You don't have to fight beasts or monsters there before your classes start, that is in one month. You just need to get used to that place and report to us if you have been teleported to our nearby shelters. We will try our best to assign you a superior in your shelters even if you're teleported to a faraway one. We will contact their headquarters and ask them to assist you. Why are they not telling us about the shelters that are under the Azuras? I heard they have taken control of a few of our shelters. They make those of us slaves who teleport there unluckily. They know that if we knew, most of us would run away but the government didn't give us a choice. We would be breaking the law if we don't do as the headmaster says. Isn't the same as becoming a slave of government instead of the slave of Davrix? Headmaster had a good hearing but he ignored these comments as it was the same every year. He further added, if you don't have your AI watches then collect them from the school office and head to the portal area. Make sure to report to us after you return from your journey. Good luck to all of you. Saying that the headmaster walked out of the auditorium. Rio looked at his AI watch given by his new mother and thought inwardly, I still can't understand what ulterior motive that lady had to adopt someone like me, the portal that was situated at the gate of the school. There were two guards at the entrance of the portal. They saw his school card and let him enter the portal. The portal was like a medicine capsule with a silver painted door and AI installed. He went inside and felt that it was very comfortable. But there was nothing inside and only one person was allowed to use the portal at a time. He tapped his watch that rang with some notification sounds and synced with the portal as its door closed. A text appeared on the screen of the AI watch with the letters, teleport. Rio tapped it and his body was drowned in white light. He felt as if the ground was ascending but the blinding white light didn't let him see anything. After a few seconds passed, the portal door opened and he stepped out of it. But what he saw in front of him had turned his mind upside down. There was a big magic circle below the portal capsule and it was situated in a white hall that was big enough to cover ten houses of a peasant family. Eight middle-aged men and three women in their thirties were standing around it. Two things they had in common were the color of their eyes which was red and the uniform they were wearing which was blue with purple lines that went vertically down. They were all looking at Rio as if he was their new slaughtering lamb. He could see pity in some of their eyes but three of the men had mocking smiles on their faces as if thinking about what would happen with this new human. Their eyes are red and they are wearing the uniform of the Azura race. His heartbeat started thumping when he understood what happened. 
he instantly ran back to the portal and started tapping his watch so he could return to Earth. Oh, shit, it's not working. Then after 10 minutes, it didn't work. The AI watch was not syncing with the portal. Human child, don't waste your energy. We are letting you try so you could come out on your own but that doesn't mean you should make us wait. Kindly follow us to his majesty or we will do it forcefully which you wouldn't like. A woman's calm voice came from outside the portal. Hearing that they would forcefully take him away, he came out. It would be better if I cooperate with them before finding a way to escape from here. He said, okay I'll follow you. Lead the way. The people in the room were surprised how this human child had no fear of them and agreed easily to listen to them. Most of the time, when a human teleported here they would cry and try to resist until they were broken mentally or physically. The woman who spoke earlier said, follow me. After saying that, she started walking towards the exit of the gate. With no option left, Rio followed behind. They walked out of the room and went straight for five minutes. Then they took the stairs to climb down and walked towards another hall which was on the first floor. Rio felt like he had come back to the old age of kings and queens. The first floor looked majestic and luxurious, there was white marble on the floor with a red carpet that went straight in the direction of the room where the woman was going. He looked around him and saw no one was following them but he understood that even if he started escaping here he would only be inviting death as he was in the tiger's den. They came near a big entrance where two guards were standing. The door was made of black metal. Guards bowed to the woman and opened the entrance. They entered the hall and there were empty chairs on both sides of the walls. The carpet went up to the throne where a middle-aged man with a height of two meters was sitting on it. He had a gentle smile on his face but his white hair came down to his shoulder. His eyes were crimson red and his skin was pale in color. He was giving off an aura that sent a chill down Rio's spine. A girl was sitting next to the man on another chair on his left side, which appeared special just like the throne. Rio's gulped nervously and forgot that there was anyone else in the room beside her. Ah, uh, whoa. Rio let out his admiration as he gazed at her as if she was a descending fairy from heaven. Stunning. That was the first word that came to his mind for her mesmerizing look. Her white hair came down below her waist but a little part was also falling down her bosom which was big and ideal in proportion and hidden behind the beautiful black dress to not cause chaos to Rio's innocent mind. A red ribbon was worn on her neck that appeared like a flower. Her white hair glistened in the light of the magical stones placed on the side of the walls. Her scarlet eyes looked like jewels. She could be considered even more beautiful than all the girls he had met ever in his life. Even though celebrities in movies paled in comparison to her. If she passed by on the streets, everyone would naturally all stop to stare at her. Cough, cough, we are also here, young boy. Don't just give all your attention to her, the middle-aged man who was sitting on the throne spoke. Ah, sorry. I got mesmerized by her beautiful red eyes. I apologize. Rio said with a bittersweet smile. The women from earlier bowed to the man sitting on the throne and left the hall. Do you know why you're here? The white-haired man asked. Nope. He shook his head. Let's introduce each other first then I'll explain to you. I'm the emperor of this land, my name is Dylan. And this is my daughter, Lia, who will become the empress in the future. Emperor Diane said with a sweet smile and then gazed at Rio. Looking at his response, he understood that the emperor was waiting for him to introduce himself. I'm Rio, an adopted child of the Havenglow family. He said with a nonchalant voice. When were you adopted? Dylan asked with raised eyebrows. Last month. He replied and saw pity in the emperor's eyes. Oh. I see. I thought all humans are vile creatures, they only know how to destroy nature until they find another world to do it all over again. Emperor spoke, then he paused and looked at Rio to ask, what's your opinion about this? I believe the same but good and evil are present everywhere. Not all humans are bad, and not all azuras are good. Some good people are forced to do evil things for their survival. As you know, the Davrix race invaded Earth, and humans were forced to come here for survival as they are weak against the Davrix race. Rio said as a matter of factly. Don't you fear I'll kill you if you take the side of humans in front of us? A sweet melody voice came from beside. Lia was smiling at him coldly with her beautiful red eyes. I already know I'm a dead man the moment I was teleported here. Will you spare my life if I show you fear? Rio looked back into her eyes which made her grit her teeth and clench her fist. Lia, don't scare him, he is not entirely wrong with his words. The emperor turned to look at his daughter. His eyes moved to Rio and he continued, listen, boy, I'll go straight to the point. I needed someone who could inherit my powers and you're the perfect candidate for it. Dylan said with a severe voice. Why would you pass down your power to someone from the human race whom you consider an enemy? Rio asked with puzzlement. Because it can only be inherited by someone who was born with no innate talents. We investigated some human prisoners who were teleported here. 
They told us that 60% of human children are born with no innate talents, among that 60%, most of them don't even get their AI watch as they want to pursue a different career. The remaining humans, who choose to come to this land, have many other shelters where they can get sent away. We rarely get a human prisoner and the one that is around her age without any innate talent, you're fortunately the first one.so that solves my problem. So will you inherit my powers? Dylan explained. This can't be a coincidence, the prophecy said the boy would have his hair color the same as the shade of love, blood, and death. I can't believe his words came true. He thought inwardly as a mysterious glint flickered in his eyes Dylan was thinking about the prophecy that came true. He didn't want to reveal it so early when the emperor didn't even believe such things. But it was told by his old man and he wanted only the well-being of his daughter so Dylan was left with no choice. Don't you think that after you pass down the power I'll use it against you and your daughter? He asked with a questioning glint in his eyes. Magic, are you provoking me on purpose? Lia spoke with murderous intent. The temperature in the room lowered. When I will pass down the powers I'll also make you marry my daughter and the marriage includes you to be bound in the oath. It won't let you go against both of us and if you do your body and soul will shatter into nothingness. The emperor explained sweetly as if he was telling his soon-to-be son-in-law how much he loves him Rio swallowed nervously and sat down on the floor. What happened? Are you scared of dying or you're scared of becoming a traitor of the human race? Lia asked amusingly. No, not that. Rio shook his head and he was still dazed. Then what is it? Dylan asked this time as he was also puzzled. I cannot believe that I would be marrying the most beautiful girl living in the current time, Rio spoke as he was still lost in his thoughts. Stupid. Lia mocked him while her heart fluttered hearing someone praise her on her face, people feared her so much that no one dared to speak openly as their life was valuable. They didn't want to risk their life by misspeaking and fanning the wrath of the Azura's emperor. You don't look like that would be happy just because you're marrying a pretty girl after giving your heroic speech on humanity and good or evil. What's your reason behind it? Dylan asked with curious eyes as he figure out this boy was not that simple. Last night, the girl's father rejected me saying that I have no innate talent and I'm not worthy of her. Rio smiled while speaking each word. A realization struck both father and daughter. They gazed at the boy on the floor. That explains why you were dazed. But do you agree to inherit my powers? Dylan spoke to him to probe if he would agree without force or not. I have four conditions, Rio spoke as if he was thought of such conditions long ago but he had made it on the spot. Are you so tired of living that you're asking us to agree to your conditions? Who do you think you are? Lia glared at him. I think I'm your future husband. Hugh Shuklid. You. Lia found this boy annoying. Okay, tell me what's your condition. As long as it's fair enough I'll fulfill it, Dylan agreed with a bittersweet smile. First condition is that I'll not kill a human without a fair reason, Rio spoke about his first condition and he knew they would have a problem with this. Have you not gone to military school yet, kid? Dylan asked. How do you know? Rio asked while scrunching his eyebrows in surprise. Your lack of knowledge explains it. When the human scientists set up their portal, they linked it to those devices on your wrist that you call an AI watch. Whenever a person is about to die in this land, the security mechanism automatically activates and their bodies get teleported out of here and they cannot enter our world for a month to three months, depending on the damage dealt on them, humans set up this safety mechanism so their strong warriors don't become the meal of beasts. Dylan explained as it was his favorite subject to research in the human way of life. He would question the slaves about humanity and their way of life. Rio's eyes widened hearing this information but he still had one doubt. He asked, what if the AI doesn't activate and break? Do humans really not die here? There are circumstances where humans can't avoid dying such as a giant beast swallowing them and a sudden powerful strike that would kill a human instantly without allowing the AI watch enough time to activate, since you don't want to take a human's life unfairly for a good reason, I'll leave it to you how you deal with them. Just chase them away, because I'll need you to protect our lands against them. They attack the beasts and fairies that are under our protection. Unlike humans, these beasts don't have a safety mechanism for escape, they drop their skill which the human race wants and disappear from this land forever. Dylan said with a sorrowful voice. If what you're saying is true, then I'll help you to protect them and do what I can to send humans back to Earth. Rio said with some hesitation. Okay, what are your other conditions? Dylan looked at this young boy with interest who was going to walk a path to go against the human race while thinking about their safety as well. I will kill anyone or anything who would come my way to disrespect me or harm those dear to me. I won't discriminate by race and gender. This includes Azuras as well. Rio spoke with a cold glint in his eyes. That's natural. If someone tries to disrespect the husband of Azuras Empress, they deserve death. 
I understand. Tell me your other two conditions so we can move forward. Dylan wasn't patient and said to hurry him. My third condition is that no one will restrict my freedom and the last, I won't allow her to marry another man besides me. She has to be loyal to me. Rio said while a chill crept up to his spine as a killing intent was directed towards him, Lia was glaring at him with a murderous look in her eyes which was putting a lot of pressure on him. But he had to put forward his condition no matter what. Your third condition is okay but Lia can restrict your freedom if she needs you. As for the fourth one, it's obvious. The marriage oath will put you both in a binding that none of you can break. You will need each other's permission to marry someone else. Dylan said after looking at his daughter whose face was becoming beat red by their conversation. He continued, since all your conditions are agreed upon, let's initiate the marriage. Hold each other's hands. Rio stretched his right hand towards Lia who was ignoring him like thin air after hearing her father's words, Dylan pointed with his eyes at her to give her hand forward as he saw she was reluctant, she slowly moved her hand and placed it on his warm hand. Rio felt a cold feathery hand kept on his palm. His heartbeat was thumping faster. He never imagined the girl, who moved his heart when he first saw her in enemy land, would marry him. Now pray to God to take each other as husband and wife and swear on manna, blood, family, ancestors as well as heaven that you will both love each other dearly and support each other in difficult times. You would be happy in each other's glory and take care of each other if you're sick. Dylan explained the process with a cheerful voice as he was happy his daughter was getting married. I, Rio Haven Glow, pray to God to take this girl right in front of my eyes, who is more beautiful than the angels of heaven, as my wife. I swear on my manna, my blood, my family, my ancestors, and heaven to always love her dearly. I will be happy in her glory and support her in her difficult times. I'll take good care of her whenever she is sick. I'll keep these words as long as she doesn't betray me. Rio said while looking into her jewel-like red eyes. Magic Leah's coldness melted slightly hearing his oath. She felt warmth taking over her heart. She looked at her father as she was nervous, but he cheered her with his eyes. She spoke after some hesitation, I, Lia Devlin, pray to God to take Rio Havenglow as my husband. I swear on my manna, my blood, my family, my ancestors, and heaven to always love him dearly. I will be happy in his glory and support him in his difficult times. I'll take good care of him whenever he is sick. She spoke these words but was looking in a different direction because her face was getting redder. That's perfect. Now seal the deal with a kiss and marriage will be officially done. Dylan said while smiling ear to ear while smoke was coming out of Leah's ears because of shyness. Dylan indicated to Rio with his eyes. He understood and moved towards Leah. He was a head taller than her so when he stood in front of her, she could see his sea green eyes. He grabbed her waist with one hand and supported the other hand to her head. Then he moved his face closer to hers. He could feel her flowery scent invading his nostril. Leah didn't resist and closed her eyes. She felt warm lips pressing down on hers while Rio felt an electric current running down his body. Her soft lips like the petals of a rose were intoxicating. Their heartbeat was resounding in each other's ears. A light shone around them and a warm feeling entered their body. Dylan saw a leaf tattoo appearing on their shoulders. Whoa, who would have expected for heaven to bless you too? I have only heard about it in legends. Those leaves on your shoulder are a blessing from heaven where they link your soul to each other. You would feel each other's location even from a long distance and allow you to talk to each other in your thoughts. Dylan was dazed seeing the results while Lia was embarrassed from the kiss. She didn't want to admit it but she wished for the kiss to last a little longer. She felt a weird kind of bliss. Rio touched the tattoo on his shoulder which was the same as the one on Leah's. Now, you're my son-in-law. I'll announce this news to everyone. Dylan said. Rio moved his hand in front of his face and said, wait a second. What happened? The duo of father and daughter looked at him with raised eyebrows. I would be in trouble if you spread the news of a human marrying the Azura Empress. Please alter the words that I'm also an Azura and make sure no one knows even here that I am a human. Rio said as he was worried he would be captured by humans. Oh, you're right. We should keep some information secret. I wouldn't want my newlywed daughter to become a widow. Emperor Dylan said with a bittersweet smile. He continued, later, I'll help you learn a spell that will disguise you as an Azura. You can go with Lia to see your room for now. We will start your training from tomorrow's morning. Have a memorable night, you too. Saying that he winked at them and walked out of the hall. The awkward silence fell between them. I still don't understand. I don't believe that he wanted me to marry you just because he wants me to inherit his power. There is more to it than how it appears. Rio decided to break the silence by asking her his doubts. You are not as stupid as you look but why didn't you ask him? Lia asked with an amusing glint in her eyes. Don't you fear those oaths that you're making fun of your husband and calling him stupid? 
I didn't ask him because he wouldn't tell me and besides you're my closest bonding in this foreign land among Azura so I asked you. Rio said as he knew she has become his closest family in this life. The holy oath doesn't restrict wives from teasing their husbands and yeah, there is another reason why a human was chosen to be my husband. Lia said with a stiff voice. What reason? Rio scrunched his eyebrows as he looked at her with curious eyes. When I was born, they said I'll become the greatest enemy of the human race and I'll be killed by the human warriors on my 22nd birthday. But? Lia spoke with a grave tone then she paused in middle as she was hesitating to say any further. But? Rio asked back. But to reverse the wheel of destiny I have to marry a human and. Lia stopped speaking and her face turned redder when she thought about the next word of the sentence. And? Can't you complete your sentence in one go? You're keeping me in suspense like a dark mystery movie, Rio complained. And he can love me enough to go against all the human race, only then can I be saved. She didn't say this piece of information as she didn't want to force him to love her just for pity. She wanted someone who truly cared for her. You don't need to know everything. I'll show you your new home. Follow me. Saying that she started walking out of the hall. Rio hurriedly followed behind her as he was worried he would get lost in this huge mansion and the Azuras would kill him if they saw a human walking freely in their mansion. Lia walked out of the hall and went into a wide corridor. After walking for a while, a room appeared at the left side of the corridor. That door will lead you to our personal library, only me and my father can go in there. But now you can also use it. Although we have a royal library but some books you can only find here which we kept away from the others. She pointed towards the left door while walking ahead. Aren't you afraid I'll sell these books and take them out to the human world? Rio asked her as he saw she was showing him trust just on their first day. That oath wouldn't let you betray me unless you want your existence to vanish, Lia kept walking while telling him with a stiff voice. I'm literally trapped in her clutches. Rio swallowed his saliva nervously. She went out of the building through a big door and they entered a garden. Moonlight was reflecting on the surface of the pond in the middle. There were red roses like flowers around the pond which bear red berries of pebble sizes. The garden was big enough to cover twenty auditoriums of his military school. It was surrounded by big walls on top of which a few azuras were patrolling. He saw different types of trees and each one looked different than the one on earth. Some had colorful leaves and some had glowing fruits. One even had dolls hanging from it but these dolls looked like either beasts or humans. But the one which attracted his attention was the tree in the center of the garden. It was thirty meters tall and it had white glowing leaves with rainbow-colored fruits. His eyes widened looking at that tree as he could see palm-sized fairies hovering around that tree and some even sat on the branches. Lia saw his expression as he was looking around the garden. I take care of this garden myself and no one touches it without my permission. Even you can't harm or pluck anything from here. Otherwise, it will be considered betraying me, she said with a threat in her voice. Hearing her voice Rio came out of his dazed state as he was lost watching the tree in the middle of the garden. What's that? He pointed towards it while ignoring what she said. That's a rainbow fruit tree. Father brought its seed from an ancient ruin. We haven't found a second one. Nature spirits take care of it for me. If you touch it then I'll personally kill you even if it means for me to die, she glared at him as she saw he was attracted to her beloved tree. Shouldn't I be jealous of that tree that you care about more than your husband? Rio shook his head in disappointment and looked at the side of the building they came from. The building was extended for hundreds of meters and it was thirty meters tall. The stone was made to make it look white but he wasn't sure what materials the engineer used. The top of the building was made conical just like the castle in the medieval age. It looked like they came out of the back door of the castle where the throne room and stateroom were present. There was a small villa beside the pond, where Lia was going. It had two female guards around the entrance with spears in their hands. It was built inside the walls but it was separated from the main castle. The villa was designed in a circular shape. There was a fountain in front of it. The only thing common with the castle was that it was also made of white stones. Lia entered it while Rio followed her behind. However, the female guards placed their spears in front of Rio as he was about to go ahead. Spear almost hit his head and he tripped backward on the ground to dodge it. Others cannot enter the Empress Villa. One of the female guards glared at Rio whose hair was brown. They were wearing the blue uniform but the purple stripes were thicker on her cloth. Their hair was short and the other guard had black hair. Their eyes were red just like other Azuras. Don't stop him, he will live here from now on. Leah's voice sounded from behind who had turned to look at Rio who was patting his clothes to remove the dirt from tripping on the ground. The guards removed their spears and bowed to her, I'm sorry your highness. Rio then walked towards Lia who had already entered the villa. Female guards were gazing at Rio as if he was a heavenly prince to be able to enter the empress villa. No one besides the emperor had ever stepped in here besides some trusted female maid and guards. 
so they were astonished by seeing him enter the villa. Inside he could see a staircase leading to the second floor, while on the left side were a few rooms but one door was opened, which showed it was a kitchen where maids were busy making food for the empress. On the right were big windows with glasses that showed the beauty of the garden and the pond. The flower-shaped chandelier on the ceiling was making a small tank glow which had golden fishes swimming around. The couch was placed in the middle with a table. Lia walked past it and took the stairs, she entered a luxurious room that was big enough to be called a hall. There were couches on the side and a king-sized bed in the middle. A vase with flowers was placed beside her bed and small magic lights were glittering in her room. A door was attached to the wall which might be a bathroom. She walked to the window and drew the curtains wide open. You will live here from now on. Although I don't want to live with you in the same room, I have to accept you since we are already bound in the oaths of heaven," Lia said with some bitterness in her eyes as she was gazing at the moon. She looked at it as if she was thinking something. Don't worry, I can sleep on the couch until you accept me in your heart," Rio said as he guessed what she was worried about. Hearing his words, she turned around and looked at him as if she wasn't expecting him to say this. She murmured, you're really a weird one. What did you say? He couldn't hear it so he asked her to repeat it. Nothing. She didn't want to repeat it and continued, that door will lead you to the bathroom. Footsteps were heard, and a sweet voice came, may I enter, your highness? Yes, you can come. Leah's eyes moved to the door and Rio also turned back. A girl who appeared to be in her early twenties entered the room wearing a maid costume. She was a blonde with a ponytail. She was the second prettiest girl Rio met in the land of Azura. Although she wasn't at Leah's level, she could easily rival movie stars in his world. Dinner is ready, your highness. Where would you like to have your dinner? The blonde-haired girl asked politely. I'm not hungry, Lia said. But I'm hungry, Rio spoke hurriedly, thinking he would sleep without eating anything. You won't get any food tonight. That's your punishment for kissing me, Lia's voice was heard in his thoughts and she coldly glared at him. Are you for real? I was just following your father's order, Rio retaliated. So will you jump from a cliff if he asks? She was staring daggers at him but the maid wasn't able to hear what Lia was saying to Rio. Of course not. I'll only do things that have some benefits for me, Ryo showed his big smile. This is Yami, the chief maid. You can ask her for anything you need from tomorrow morning, Lia told him but she didn't forget to speak the last part of the sentence word by word as if reminding him that he was destined to be punished tonight. Okay, I understood. Ryo walked towards the couch with dropped shoulders and lay down. He turned his head towards the couch back like a saddened kid whose demands were not fulfilled by his mother. Yami, he is your new lord. Don't let anyone harm him, Lia said to the blonde-haired girl. Who is he, your highness? Yami asked with puzzlement. Although no one dared to ask Lia anything, Yami was special to her as they grew up together. She trusted her a lot and considered her like a sister. He is mine, Lia said in a small voice so Rio couldn't hear as her face became beet red after saying the piece of information. She probably brought a new plaything for her, Yami thought inwardly as her mind didn't go in direction that Rio could be her husband. Okay, your highness. Have a beautiful sleep. Saying that Yami left their room. He is acting like a cute child, Lia looked at Ryo with a gentle smile who was sleeping in the corner with his back towards her and walked to her bed to sleep. Splash, a cold wet sensation on his face jolted him awake from his beautiful dream. Ah. He opened his eyes and fumed in anger as he saw water spill on his face. Wake up, it's already late, don't sleep like a horse. Father is waiting for you. A mischievous voice welcomed him who disturbed his sleep. Seeing her fairy-like face reduced his anger by 80% but he was still annoyed. Couldn't you wake me up in a gentle way? He sat up and asked with a bitter voice while wiping the water from his face with the sleeves. Wasn't I already gentle? I was thinking of throwing a bucket of freezing water. If you want I'll be less gentle next time. She said while crossing her arms while her eyes looked as if she was planning something mischievous. Just wake me up like a loving wife. Rio said while stretching his body and yawning. Come with me, or you will be late for your first training class she said while walking towards the door. Seeing her leaving, Rio stood up and chased behind her at a fast pace while fixing his clothes and ruffling his wet hair. They went to the castle and entered a room. It had two couches placed opposite to each other near the windows which were showing the beautiful scene of the garden. Emperor was already waiting there while a maid was placing the tea cups on the table that was in the middle of both couches. Young man, it seems your wife didn't let you sleep last night. Dylan gave a knowing smile to his new son-in-law. Father, Lia was embarrassed hearing it as her face flushed red and she glared at the emperor while her eyebrows were scrunched. Ha ha ha. Okay, come sit here. We will start your lessons with the basic knowledge first as you don't know much about it. The newlywed couple walked to the couch and sat opposite to Dylan. You can leave, Lia will serve me the tea. Dylan said to the maid. 
He was going to talk about things that no one else should know besides the trio so he had to ask her to leave. As you say, your majesty. Maid bowed to them and walked out of the room. Okay, I'll start with the basics. There are different ranks of beasts, they are categorized by the color of their cores such as yellow, purple, black, red, silver and golden, where yellow being the lowest and golden being the highest. When you kill a beast, it drops a core. If it's yellow in color you will receive a beast soul and a stats point of yellow rank. These two things are the reason why humans invaded our lands and hunted innocent beasts for their greed. Dylan's voice filled with coldness while saying the last sentence. Lia poured some tea in his cup and passed him. He grabbed the teacup and took a small sip. He looked at Rio and said, your job will be to save these beasts that are in our protection. A beast under Azura will have our marks on them which are those purple stripes you may have seen on our guards' clothes. You can command them as a lord to fight alongside you. Do I need to look for the purple stripes? Aren't all the beasts under your supervision? Rio asked with a puzzled face. We haven't been able to do that yet as there are still more than 70% undiscovered lands. So, there are many beasts who haven't pledged their loyalty to us. Be wary of these beasts as they will attack you, I don't want my little daughter to grow old alone. Dylan said with an amusing tone in his voice. If I can't kill the one I have to protect and the undiscovered one might kill me, then how am I supposed to become stronger like other humans? Rio asked while he saw Liao was filling a cup of tea again. He thought, I'll have to take it myself. She didn't even let me have my dinner. That's a good question. Just like how beasts drop a core, humans also leave behind a part of power in the form of energy pills before they are sent away by their AI watch. Absorbing these pills will grant you one of their stats points and beast soul of highest rank they possess. Dylan said before taking a sip from the cup. Layla hovered the cup of tea towards Rio and indicated to him with her eyes to take it. Rio's eyes widened seeing her serve him tea and a smile bloomed on his face. He took it and said lovingly, thanks, wifey. Hearing him call her, wifey, the cup from Leah's hand almost fell as she was going to have her tea. Emperor Dylan was smiling ear to ear seeing his new son-in-law getting along with his daughter. But we Azuras get our strength from cultivating our body by forming a core near our heart and we don't get stats points when we kill a beast but we do get their beast souls. Do you understand now? Dylan explained and took a sip from the cup before putting it on the table. Yes, I understand now. Like how Azuras make core in their body, humans make a root which helps them absorb the beast cores. But I don't understand these so-called innate talents, Rio asked while scratching the back of his head with a bittersweet smile. He felt that someone elbowed him on his side. He looked beside him and saw Lia indicating to him to drink his tea that she served him. Sorry, I was too focused. He floated the cup in front of his mouth. Slurp slurp slurp. He put the tea cup on the table after finishing it in one go. I wouldn't have robbed you of your tea if you drank it slowly. Lia mocked him. You won't understand so I'm not going to explain to you. Rio said while cheering in his mind. Emperor Dylan was happily seeing the lovebirds interact with each other and when they were done, he decided to answer Rio's question, innate talent is something everyone is born with but humans believe only 40% are lucky to be born with it. Some innate talents are already awakened and don't need any help to be awakened while some never find the switch that it requires to be awakened and stay dormant because they were told they are unworthy since they were born. Rio's eyes shone as he heard he still had a chance to awaken his innate talent. He was also told he was unworthy because of having no inner talent. Dylan continued, these innate talents are also categorized by ranks such as F, E, D, C, B, A and S. My innate talent as the emperor of the Azura is only a rank while Lia is blessed by heaven. Her innate talent is at S rank. If you had knowledge of innate talents based on human findings then your face would have been filled with astonishment because humans don't even know about the existence of S rank. The highest they have known is a rank innate talent only. Rio felt ashamed as he didn't know much about these basic knowledge. He was an orphan until one month ago and grew up by using the inheritance left behind by his grandfather. Sorry, my classes will start after a month, then they might teach me these things. Government keeps it a secret from us until we enroll in military school. Rio said with a bittersweet smile. Don't worry. Even after you graduate from your school, there will be many things they won't be able to teach you. Magic. It's not like your innate talent is none, you just haven't awakened it yet. These innate talents decide your growth potential and how far you can go. However, you also receive a special skill when you awaken your innate talent. Someone with an A rank innate talent can absorb red cores and receive red tier beast souls easily but someone with C rank will have a hard time doing it. Not only that, but many fail to ever advance their roots to the red stage in their life. Even among Azuras, if they have lower innate talent they won't be able to advance their cores to red stage or even worse black. Dylan explained. 
If it's that way then why did you marry me to your daughter? You could have found someone with a better innate talent, Ryo asked with a puzzled face while his eyes gazed at the emperor with suspicion. Haha, why do you act like you have married a lioness who will chew you alive? Heaven decided it to be you, there must be some reasons behind it that we will find in future. Besides, I can pass down my powers to you and when I die you can absorb my core that will help you to make your innate talent a rank. I'll give you our family manual that will help you to break your body limits to absorb my core and assist you inherit my innate talent, Dylan said amusingly as he saw his son-in-law's doubtful gaze. She is not a lioness but a demoness. Rio didn't say it out loud as he was worried he would get bullied by her. You will remain hungry tonight as well if you talk bad about me, as if she heard his thoughts, Leah's voice sounded in his mind. They were able to feel each other's location and they could talk in mind from anywhere. They received this blessing by the heaven when their special bonding was sealed by a memorable kiss. Rio spoke hurriedly, no, no, she is a very caring and loving wife. She even served me tea, I was puzzled because I'm really not worthy of her. Rio's words were filled with bitterness in the end and for some reason Leah's heart ached seeing him say that. As long as you keep my daughter happy, you're the worthy one. I don't see any cunningness from you like other humans. You're a weird one, Rio, Dylan spoke with a glint in his eyes. Weird one? Rio murmured while his face was filled with confusion. Let me pass you my inheritance. Saying that, Dylan hovered his hand in the air and pressed his palm on Rio's forehead. He closed his eyes and a glimmering light flowed from his forehead to hand which went through Rio's forehead. Rio felt a cooling sensation entering his body through the forehead. This effect stayed for a few seconds then Dylan removed his hand. The calmness only stayed for a few seconds. An electric current ran down from his veins as if it would burst open. He gritted his teeth and endured the pain. Bits of sweat poured from his forehead. His watch, which was inactive, started flashing and new information was scrolling on its screen like crazy. A screen floated in front of his eyes, which was the result of the AI watch. You have acquired the ancient Devlin skills and cultivation technique. The AI watch was developed by scientists to measure the human stats they received from the beast in Azura's land. It also reported the information of acquiring new beast souls and skills as well as any technique someone learned or acquired. Additionally, the safety ejection feature when badly injured helped to save many humans on this foreign land. Ryo calmed down after this information came to him. He opened his profile by thinking about it in his thoughts as the AI watch worked by monitoring his brain waves. User, Rio Haven Glow. Race, Human. Inatronk, N. A. Physical Power, 10. Skills. Soul Link, your soul is linked with Lia Devlin. You can feel each other's location and talk to each other from anywhere. Ancient Devlin Breathing Technique. Devlin Might, not applicable you need to drink Devlin's pure blood to awaken this. Devlin Transformation, transform your body to Devlin. In this form, you receive 20% additional stats. Mana cost, 10. Devlin movement technique, teleports to 20 meters range. Mana cost, 5. Judgment of Devlin, you can perform a 1000% damage strike to finish your enemy. It has 10% chances to instantly kill the target. Mana cost, 90% of total mana. Whoa! Rio's mouth was agape seeing his stats windows which had some foreign skills appeared on it. What happened? Are you okay? Lia asked with some concern as she was worried when she saw him in pain a few minutes ago. It was hard for anyone to learn Devlin's family ancient skills. Even among Azure it was hard and the technique would crumble the body if the person is not related to family by any means. It was a blessing that helped Devlin's bloodline to keep their skills and secrets in safe hands. Lia was worried Rio might fail and die since he was not even an Azure. She was clutching her hand so hard in panic that nails had stabbed in her soft skin and blood could be seen. However, he was related to Liao with a beautiful bond since they became husband-wife now. So, the emperor told her that it was safe but she was still worried. Look, here. Rio showed his AI watch to her as his stats appeared on the small screen. Dylan also leaned forward to see what he was showing. They had expected for him to have these skills but they didn't know he could read them on his AI watch. This stuff is good. Can you get some for us from your world when you come back? Dylan said while looking at his AI watch with excitement on his face. Didn't you get one from human prisoners? Rio asked him with a curious look. Sometimes I doubt if you're even a human. We asked all the prisoners one by one, we only received a single answer that the AI watch can't be reset. Dylan looked at him as if he was a naive child who hadn't gone out to see the world. He scratched his head awkwardly as he was embarrassed to know less than an Azura about humans. Okay, I'll bring two with me for you guys. Rio said with a bittersweet smile. This says you need Devlin's pure blood to awaken that skill. Lia said, raising her eyebrows while pointing to the third skill. Oh, you're right. I missed it out of excitement. 
Do you guys have anyone with the Devlin's pure blood? Ryo asked nonchalantly while looking at the duo of father-daughter with questioning eyes. You're asking as if they will give you their blood and even if they give you, you need to be. Lia stopped midway before completing her sentence as she found the other half hard to share with him. What do I need to be? Ryo raised his eyebrows. You don't need to know. Lia coldly said to him. You need to be their beloved one otherwise the blood will reject you and you might not be able to advance with your route to black stage or higher. Dylan thought in mind as he understood his daughter. She didn't want to tell him for some reason. Is she planning to give her blood to him? But that won't work unless she has given him a good place in her heart. I hope this boy doesn't hurt her feelings. He thought inwardly while gazing at his daughter. Lia was not close to anyone besides him and Yami. He couldn't understand what she was thinking. If Ryo received her blood and awakened that skill it meant he had already established an important place in her heart. Use that breathing technique to form a mana core. Try advancing to the yellow rank then I'll give you your first mission. If you need anything you can ask your wifey, Dylan chuckled and teased the kids. He stood up and walked out of the room. Growl. Ryo's stomach made a sound and he smiled in embarrassment at the girl beside him. Let's go back. Lia said to him and started leaving the room. It looks like she is finally gonna give me food. Ryo spoke in his mind and hurriedly followed behind. Sun was glistening in the sky as it fell on the couple's body. Their shadow hugged each other as they reached the Empress Villa. It would be night at my place on earth, they said the day cycle of our city and this land is opposite to each other. Ryo thought inwardly. Lia entered the villa and sat on the couch. She gazed at Ryo and patted the seat beside her. Ryo walked to the couch and sat beside her. She extended her hands and a black hole appeared on top of her palm from which a white bottle came out. How did you do that? Ryo asked with his mouth agape. It's a rare beast soul that lets you store things. Lia answered Ryo while inspecting the bottle in her hand that was the size of her index finger. Ryo saw a blue liquid was glowing inside the bottle. He curiously looked at it as he didn't know what it was. Lia handed it to him and said, drink it. Ryo took it and removed the stopper. He tried smelling it, placing it near his nose but he failed to find any scent. He looked at Lia with a bittersweet smile. She glared at him which made him gulp all the content down. His throat burned as if a flame was burning. The sensation went towards his stomach and his face became red. Sweat started pouring down. Close your eyes and use the breathing technique. It will help you form your mana core. Lia said to him with a nonchalant voice. Ryo did as he was asked but his eyes were scrunched and he was gritting his teeth. The cloth he was wearing had already become wet from all the sweat. He activated the technique and his breathing pattern became stable. The flame in his stomach was becoming lower. Try feeling all the mana around you and send them your thoughts to enter your body. A melodious voice was heard beside him. He could see darkness around him but as he stayed calm he could see tiny dots around him that were almost negligible to the eyes. They were glittering like stars. He focused on these tiny mana particles but they didn't listen to him. If you love something, set them free. They will come to you if they want you. Lia saw his struggle and understood that he was doing it wrong. Hearing her words, he stopped trying and only thought about those mana full of love. He was calm like a Buddha practitioner. He felt like he was disconnected from his surroundings. Mana particles seeing his serenity felt an attraction towards him. They started observing him. He saw, one of the mana particles had started flying towards him at a slow pace. It hovered around him as if thinking something. After some hesitation it entered his body through his forehead. As the first one entered, the other mana particles all attention picked on Ryo. They all started rushing towards him like blue butterflies dancing gracefully in pairs. Like a broken dam, they entered his body. They started merging with the blue liquid he consumed earlier. The blue liquid which formed the flame churned continuously and absorbed the mana that was coming towards Ryo. His stomach felt as if it would burst open. Arg! He cried out in pain as blood spurted from his lips. Lia, who was beside him, caressed his head with worries filling her eyes and whispered, just a little more, don't give up. As if he got motivation, he ignored all the pain and became relaxed. Blood kept dripping from his lips. He stilled his heart and mind. Lia wiped the dripping blood away with a towel like a caring mother while keeping her hand on his back to support him. Bang! A resounding sound came from Rio which alerted everyone nearby. Guards came to check if their empress was safe. They saw the white-haired beauty wiping blood from Rio's mouth. They were astonished but Yami, who also came out to see, waved them away as if they were flies. Rio saw the blue flame which absorbed the mana splitting into two parts like amoeba cell splitting into two daughter cells. One part took the form of a root-like structure and moved towards his dantian and the second part moved towards his heart which was round in shape. After they split up, more mana started flowing towards him which entered his body. 
Half was absorbed by the root-like structure and half was sucked by the round-shaped newly formed thing, which was known as a core. The storm in his body came to a serenity and he could feel his body regaining tranquility. He slowly opened his eyes and saw that Liao retrieved her hand back from his head which was covered in some reddish-black colored thing. Not only her hands, even the towel in her other hand was covered in similar material which was giving off a rancid smell. He saw information floating in front of him. You have formed a root. You have formed a core. Your root has advanced to white stage. Your core has advanced to white stage. He scrunched his nose and said, what's that, it's smelling bad. Yami who was watching him said, look at yourself you will understand. Ryo looked at his hands and body by turning his head down, sure enough he was covered in reddish black material. Even the couch was ruined because he was sitting on it. What's this? He asked with a darkened face. To be daring enough to make our empress wipe your forehead with a towel and clean you while you're covered in that thing. You don't know how blessed you're. I wonder why she favors you a lot. Yami said to him with an annoyed voice. She didn't like that her empress lowered herself for another person. She loved Lia a lot and understood that the empress wouldn't do something like this for anyone. You know I'm handsome and she loves me. Ryo gave her a bright smile and turned to Lia to show her his AI watch, see this. Lia placed the towel on the couch and looked at the AI watch. Her face was filled with astonishment. That's pretty rare. Lia mumbled in his mind. What's rare? He asked with a curious look and talked in her thoughts. I have never heard anyone forming a root and core together. Lia said while looking at him as if he was an alien. As they were talking to each other in thought, Yami misunderstood them and continued saying, Your Highness, you didn't give that body refining liquid to me either. You even refused to give it to the young lady of the Mistblade clan who is your childhood friend even when the Emperor asked you. Why did you give it to him then? She asked her as she was displeased seeing him getting better treatment. Lia said with a cold voice, Do I have to tell you everything and ask you for permission before doing it? I'm sorry, Your Highness. I have forgotten my boundaries. Please forgive me. Yami bowed to her as she was confused why Lia talked to her this way for an outsider. Prepare a meal for us and ask someone to clean this. Up. Lia commanded her. You, follow me. She stood up and turned to walk upstairs towards her room. Ryo flashed a mischievous smile to Yami to show her that Lia loves him more and followed behind like a little child chasing his mother. They walked to their room and Lia opened the door of the bathroom to enter it. The inside of the bathroom was so flashy that Ryo's eyes shone and his jaw almost dropped to the ground. It had a wide bathtub that was ten times bigger and two times deeper than any he had seen before. He was unsure if it was a bathtub or swimming pool but after seeing the structure of it he was confirmed it was a bathtub. The material made for it was white in color. There were white stairs built outside and inside to enter the bathtub. There were small glowing pebble-sized magic lights placed around the bathtub structure that lit it up from the inside. The ceiling was transparent so he could see the clouds, however you wouldn't be able to see from the other side. It was especially created by expert architects. There were three shower heads to the left of the room whose switch was moon-shaped while two were placed above the bathtub as well. There were other tools as well but he ignored them and focused on the fierce girl's action. Lia went towards the bathtub and sat beside on the outer stairs. She beckoned Ryo. He went towards her and looked at her with questioning eyes. Go inside it after putting away your clothes. Lia said to him with a nonchalant voice. What, no. I'm a shy person. I won't do such a thing in front of a girl. I'll never do it. Ryo shook his head and index finger in front of her while closing his eyes like a great scholar. He opened his eyes to see that Lia was glaring at him while crossing her hands. But I'm shy he said with a little voice and walked inside the bathtub like a lamb to the slaughterhouse. She kept glaring at him which almost froze him. Please fill it with the water then I'll take off these clothes and satisfy your desire to peek on my enticing body. Ryo said proudly while rubbing the tip of his nose with his finger. Bang a fist suddenly bonked his head and he rubbed his head. He looked at the source of violence, sorry, I misspoke. Lia turned around the moon-shaped switch that was placed on the top of the bathtub and water started falling inside. Rio saw, there was a tiny bathtub drain hole in the middle of the surface which let the water pass at a slower speed. It kept the water in the bathtub fresh and clean while not making it overflow. The water soon filled the bathtub. Rio started taking off his shirt then put it outside the bathtub. He took off his pants and underwear which he hid inside pants before keeping it outside. He was embarrassed to show her this stuff. Leah's face became beet red as she saw him taking out his underwear and hiding it. She could also see his little brother down below in the water but it was a little unclear. She pretended not to say it out loud. Lia was mesmerized by his looks and the naked body. His bare chest was inviting her like a cunning demon. She ignored these thoughts and focused on what she was here for. She took out a lot of bottles and started unsealing them. 
She turned around the moon-shaped switch and the water stopped going inside the bathtub. The bathtub drain in the middle of the surface also closed which made the water inside the bathtub stay stilled. She emptied the bottle contents in the bathtub one by one. When she spilled the last one, the water started making bubbles and turning dark green. Rio first looked with curious gaze then he felt the temperature of water rising. His tranquil eyes replaced that of chaos. It felt bearable at first but after a few seconds passed, he started jumping which caused the water to splash. Oh, oh, this is hot. Are you planning to cook me alive in this bathtub and have me as a soup for your lunch? I can't even come out without my clothes. Rio cried out in pain as his flesh was burning by the hot water. That was my plan. Lia musingly said. Okay, I'll come out even if it means to give your eyes a heavenly treat. Saying that Rio was about to place his leg out but, bang his head got bonked by a fist again. These are the high quality medicinal herbs that will help your body with cultivation, absorbing the mana and beast soul. They are grown by me in my garden yet you don't value it. Lia said with a disappointing voice and a sorrowful glint flickered in her eyes. Sorry, I didn't know. Rio apologized while gritting his teeth, he continued, please tell me next time beforehand so I can be prepared. Okay, I'll think about it. Lia said with a nonchalant voice. He scrunched his eyebrows and closed his eyes. After some time passed, his body started going numb from the pain. His skin pores slowly started absorbing the water medicine. The water temperature lowered as the water started turning light green. Lia sank her hand in the bathtub to check it and then she turned around the moon-shaped switch. The bathtub drain opened and water started lowering in the bathtub while water fell from the shower heads that were above Rio's head. The cold tiny droplets of water collided with his body and chased away the numbness from the pain. His face regained serenity and the burning sensation stopped. A soothing effect enveloped his body. He felt reinvigorated and enjoyed the water kissing his naked skin. Lia felt relieved seeing him calm down. His crimson wet hair made him look charming. She kept gazing at him as he enjoyed water washing his body. Water had turned to its original color by now. Rio shook his head, causing his wet hair to splatter water around him, including Lia's face. He opened his eyes to see water dripping down her ravishing face. He placed his hand in front of his head to defend against the upcoming strike from her, but it didn't come even after a few seconds passed. Water stopped falling from the shower head, and he felt a towel covering his head. She had handed him a white towel and said, cover yourself before water runs out and expose your treasure down there. Hearing her words, he turned his head down to look at the water level, which was going lower. He hurriedly covered himself with the towel. He came out of the bathtub and asked, what will I wear now? I only have one set of clothes that has already become wet. He looked grumpy and looked at Lia, who was still sitting on the stairs of the bathtub. Lia said, I'll ask Yami to buy some new clothes for you. Wait for me outside, I need to clean myself too. Rio looked at her and realized the reddish-black material had tainted the sleeve of her clothes. There were droplets of water on her hair and face as well. He showed a bittersweet smile, and his mood calmed down. She made me go through pain to refine my body, but I can't be ignorant of her care behind her actions. How can she be so nice to me? Rio was gazing at her, which made Lia question him, what are you looking at? Nothing, saying that he turned around and walked out of the room and closed the door. Lia sighed and looked at his clothes that were tainted in reddish-black material. I can't let someone else wash his underclothes, her face turned red like a cherry after saying these words and thinking how she would have to do it herself. She grabbed his clothes and walked towards the other side of the bathroom. She wasn't embarrassed to fulfill her duty as his wife, although she was shy to show it. Lia wouldn't do this for her newlywed husband, but she remembered the words of her grandfather. It caused her to show some faith and give this boy a chance. After all, he was really different from all the humans she met before. The water splattering kept ringing in the room. An hour passed. Rio waited outside on the couch he slept on last night. After waiting for a long time, he mumbled, girls take a lot of time to bathe and get ready. It's the same for Azuras. As he was mumbling, he saw the door open with a creak sound and a fairy-like girl with an alluring body walked out. Oh. Heaven. Rio nervously gulped his saliva down, seeing the mesmerizing beauty in front of him. Her wet skin enhanced her seductive body to a higher realm. Small droplets were still present in her white hair. Her cherry-like lips and jade-like smooth skin put Rio in a daze. Her beauty could cause the downfall of a nation. She was wearing a white dress which matched with her hair and made her resemble an angel. She was only missing two featherly wings on her back. Wait for me. Lia walked past him and went downstairs. After a while, she came back and went to the dressing table to comb her hair. Rio gazed at her back with eyes that were mesmerized by her beauty. Lia could naturally see his action in the mirror and she didn't tell him, but her heart felt tickled. Rio thought she wasn't watching him staring at her back. 
After a moment later, someone's footsteps were heard and disturbed his beautiful dreamlike reality. He turned around to see Yami entering the room, with a long cart that was filled with covered bowls of food. Yami's eyes were filled with surprise as she saw Ryo was only in a towel. Why is this guy so presumptuous? She cursed him inwardly seeing how he was carefree around Lia. He felt her hot gaze and became shy. I know I have got a sexy body but can you stop looking at me that way, Ryo said bluntly with a proud smile. Shameless, Yami mocked him while pushing the cart inside the room. Place them near the couch, we will eat there, Leah's voice sounded from the dressing table. She retrieved a portable table from her spatial beast soul before placing it near the couch Ryo was sitting on. She proceeded to cover the table with a clean white cloth and put two plates and silver utensils for two people. She started placing the bowls filled with the food on the table. Lia walked towards the couch and stood in front of the table. Happy meal, your highness, she bowed to Lia before pushing the cart outside the door. Ryo finally relaxed after Yami left. He was embarrassed because he was only in a towel that was exposing half of his body. Do you always eat this much food alone? He asked with a curious expression. Lia didn't reply to him and sat beside him on the couch. After not receiving an answer, he murmured in a lower voice, no wonder you have developed well in the right places. Bang a fist suddenly bonked his head and reminded him that he shouldn't misspeak. Let's eat, Lia spoke as if nothing happened. Your way of showing love is very intense my dear wifey, Ryo complained with a bittersweet smile while rubbing the place she hit him. She took a bowl and a spoon to serve food into both of their plates. There were eight bowls of food on the portable table, and each bowl was filled with enough food to feed two people. After Lia was done serving them food, they started indulging in the food on the table together. Wayo. I have never eaten such food before. It tastes even better than the food I ate at Havenglow's family house, Ryo thought inwardly and shoved food inside his mouth. Lia gazed at the monkey who was eating his food without any manners like a hooligan. She ate her food in a graceful manner like a noble young lady. Ryo was full after eating two plates, meanwhile, our empress ate four plates of food. After a while, Yami came back to the room to clean up the table. She bowed to Lia before pushing the cart, with eaten plates and bowls, out of the room. Lia went down again without telling him. She didn't even tell me when she would return. I can't go out in a towel. Azura might think I'm an idiot since my current fashion style is out of this world. He signed. Fifteen minutes later, Lia came back. She came to him and took out a set of clothes which she handed him. Yami sent other maids to buy them from the shop. You can change into these clothes. Lia said to him. He took them and his hand felt the fine quality of material that was used to make them. These clothes are so light and soft. He wore a thin white t-shirt and replaced his towels with blue pants. He put an unbuttoned navy blue coat with a golden trim that showed little more than the muscular chest beneath that was covered with the white t-shirt. His new clothing made him look like royalty. Lia took out a silk belt and tied it on his waist whose two endings hung down to his knees. It bloomed his noble aura to another level. She fixed his collar while Ryo looked at her action in a daze. Now, you only need to use the Devlin transformation skill to resemble someone from our royal family. Lia said after fixing his collar. What do you mean? Ryo didn't understand her. Try using that skill you will understand. Lia said mysteriously while crossing her arms with an amused expression. Let me check if I have enough mana. He opened his profile and a screen floated in front of his eyes. User, Rio Haven Glow. Race, Human. Inatronk, N. A. Root, White Stage. Core, White Stage. Mana, Duapuluhu Duapulu. Physical Power, 10 plus 0. White, 0. Skills. Soul Link, Your Soul is Linked with Lia Devlin. You can feel each other's location and talk to each other from anywhere. Ancient Devlin Breathing Technique. Devlin Might, Not Applicable You Need Devlin's Pure Blood Awaken This. Devlin Transformation, Transform Your Body to Devlin. In this form, your defense is boosted by 200%. Mana Cost, 10. Devlin Movement Technique, Teleports to 20 meters range. Mana Cost, 5. Judgment of Devlin, You Can Perform a 1000% Damage Strike to Finish Your Enemy. It has 10% chances to instantly kill the target. Mama cost, 90% of total mana. Why is my mana 20 plus 20? Ryo mumbled to himself with a puzzlement. Hearing his words, Lia raised her eyebrows and said, let me see, magic. Ryo couldn't show her the floating screen so he opened his profile on the AI watch and showed her. Seeing his stats, her eyes flickered with astonishment. I have never heard of someone having double the amount of mana at the white stage. Lia spoke with a surprising tone in her voice. What do you mean double the amount of mana? Ryo's heartbeat became unstable hearing her words. When someone's at white stage, they can only have 20 mana but for you it's 40. 
you have double the amount of mana than the normal person probably because you formed root and core at the same time. She turned to him and explained in a nonchalant tone. Is it a gift or a curse? Ryo asked with a questioning voice. It's a gift but don't tell anyone or it will become a curse. Don't even let my father know. Lia said with a serious voice. Will you hide things from your dad for me? Ain't I a human you hate? Hiu Shukled. You don't need to know. Lia coldly glared at him and continued, now use the Devlin transformation skill. You have more than enough mana. Okay. Saying that he thought about the name of the skill in his mind and a white light glowed in his body. His crimson hair started turning white color and grew to neck length size. His sea green eyes turned red. A defensive aura was covering him that made him feel safe but it wasn't visible for others. It boosted his defense by 200%. He could see the surprise in Leah's eyes. Her eyes were mesmerized by his transformation and seeing her reaction, he walked towards the dressing table to look at himself. Leah followed him behind and stood behind him. Wayo, I look like your little brother. Ryo exclaimed in surprise but his happiness was met with a violent reply. Bang! Lia bonked him on his back. What did I do wrong now? Ryo turned to look at her and asked with puppy eyes as if he was deeply wronged but her. Don't call yourself my brother, Lia said with a mosquito-like voice while her face became beet red and she looked in another direction to hide her shyness. Ryo understood his mistake but he didn't think she would dislike it this much. However, he was her husband so it was really bad to call himself her brother. Now, you only need to use the Devlin transformation skill to resemble someone from our royal family. He remembered her words from earlier and asked with puzzlement, so you meant this? Now I also have white hair like you and the emperor. But aren't there others with similar hair color? It is unique to our bloodline. There aren't any other Azura who will have white hair. Even among the Devlin family, white hair means pure blood. You might find silver or gray hair but white hair like mine and yours is unique to us. Lia explained with a serious voice. Then how do I have white hair with Devlin transformation skill, since I'm not even an Azura? Ryo's eyes were filled with questioning glint. Because you're connected to me. So if an outsider uses transformation skill then their skill will resemble and give them power similar to their partner. It also helps when they have children in future. Lia spoke with a stiff voice but then she remembered what she spoke at the end and she avoided his gaze. He decided to change the topic to end the awkwardness between them, what's the plan for today, your highness? Your white rank stats points are zero. You should cultivate here. Your task is to gain a single white stats point. When you have it, I will bring you somewhere. Lia said to him while going to her bed. Okay, as your excellency says. Rio teased her and walked towards the couch and sat in a meditative position. He closed his eyes and started using the breathing technique. After some minutes passed, he could feel world energy coming towards him and entering his body from his skin pores. He felt 1 slash 100 of water droplet-like strength entering his body every 10 minutes. This feeling made his body and mind become serene. After an hour passed, he forgot his surroundings and entered a deep meditative state. Lia walked out of the room and closed the door behind noiselessly. One white stats point gained. An AI watch voice sounded in his mind and he opened his eyes slowly. He felt his strength had increased by a little but more importantly he was done with the task Lia asked him. He looked around the room but Lia was nowhere to be found. He deactivated his Devlin transformation and went downstairs. He found Yami in the kitchen who was working with the other maids. Do you know where the Empress has gone? He asked her. Magic. Hearing his footsteps and voice, Yami turned her eyes towards him and replied, Her Highness normally stays in the garden. She asked me to tell you to find her there in case you wake up from your meditative state. Okay, thanks. Saying that he turned around and left from the exit door of the Empress Villa. Outside was enveloped in the little darkness as the moonlight and magic lanterns were shining to reveal the beauty of the garden. It's already night, I was in a meditative state for almost eight hours. He walked around the garden but it didn't take him long to spot a ravishing figure in a purple dress. Her white hair was shining with the reflection of the moonlight. Small fairies were hovering around her whose wings were glowing. Her mesmerizing figure looked ethereal. When Ryo got closer, she turned around and her eyes showed a glint of happiness which she hid instantly. You look elegant in this purple dress but the white dress you wore today was my favorite. Rio said bluntly. Today? Lia raised her eyebrows then she continued, you were in the deep meditative state for almost 30 hours. What? Rio's facial expression was filled with surprise. Don't be surprised. It's not long for someone who has gone into a deep meditative state. You were lucky to enter a deep meditative state on your second try. It takes people years or decades to do so and they can stay in this state for a week to month. Lia explained and walked to him elegantly. Don't they get hungry? He asked the girl who was standing right in front of him. 
You absorb world energy which is more nutritious to your body than food. You should spend your time in the library or you will embarrass yourself in front of other Azuras. Lia said with an amused expression on her face. Oh, I have to tell you something. Rio said with a proud smile. What is it? Lia raised her eyebrows. I gained a white stats point and the task you gave me. Rio rubbed his nose with his finger and waited for her to praise him. You will need nine more stats points to reach the yellow stage. If we use this method, it will take quite a long time. Lia mumbled. After thinking a little she said, come with me. She moved towards the other side of the garden while Rio followed behind her. She looked like a fairy walking in the night as moonlight glimmered on her beautiful hair and body. She walked past a lot of trees that Rio couldn't recognize. There were a lot of different plants such as shrubs, ivy, bush, herbs, mushrooms, trees and so on. Some of them had berries like fruits and some of them had weird-looking transparent balls hanging on them in which you could see the image of the beasts, humanoids, armors and even many different things Rio didn't recognize. She has such a crazy hobby of collecting these weird plants. She stopped near a tall tropical grass with hard, hollow stems that looked like bamboo. An ivy plant was coiling around it which had some white beads attached to it like fruits. She plucked one of the white beads out of it and handed it to Rio who was standing behind her. Consume it, she said in a calm voice. Am I going to face torment of pain again like how it always happens when I'm with you? Rio hesitated and said with a fear in his eyes. He inspected the white bead in his hand that was soft like other berries. Lia rolled her eyes at him, even if it gives you pain it will make you stronger. I won't do something that will harm your life. Rio gulped nervously and ate the white bead. As it entered his mouth, it dissolved instantly. He felt a rush of energy going towards his heart. His white core absorbed the energy and he felt strength spreading inside his body. Fruit of white Eggleshu eaten. One white stats point gained. His eyes shone as he read the text floating in front of him. Whoa, it gave me a white stats point. Rio's mouth was agape. She plucked out nine more white Eggleshus and handed him, eat them all. It was tiny in size that his palm was able to hold them all at once. He ate them all by stuffing the white Eggleshu inside his mouth. They dissolved instantly even being high in quantity and a massive energy flowed towards his white core which absorbed them instantly. He felt a massive boost in strength compared to the first time he ate white Eggleshu. Nine fruits of white Eggleshu eaten. Nine white stats points gained. It gave me nine white stats points. Rio said while smiling ear to ear but he saw Liao was frowning while looking at him, he asked, what happened? It's not happening. She mumbled while confusion painted her face. What's not happening? He asked with a questioning tone and started worrying. Leah's eyes shone as if she remembered something, I think I understand now. She turned to pluck one more white Eggleshu and gave it to Rio, consume it. He scratched his head but he ate it. It dissolved in his mouth and he felt the energy was going towards his Dantian instead of going towards the core. His root absorbed it and a text appeared in front of his eyes. Fruit of white Eggleshu eaten. One white stats point gained. I received another white stats point. He said to her but he was curious to find reason about her contemplating look from earlier. I guessed it right. You can absorb double the amount of stats points than a human or an azura. It's probably due to making a root and a core at the same time. This might be the reason behind having double the amount of mana than someone at white stage. Lia spoke with a grave tone. His eyes shone with happiness as he found out he could gain double stats points that others. This would make him stronger than the others on the same level. However, he couldn't understand why his Azura wife looked worried. Isn't that a good thing? Why do you look afraid? Are you worried that I might betray Azura after becoming strong? Rio said with a gentle tone but his eyes were filled with doubts. Not that. Liao refused his claims. What is it then? Rio scrunched his eyebrows. From ancient times, people have been wary of those who have great strength or an enticing treasure. They are full of greedy nature and want it for themselves. Those in power might silence you before you fully mature. Lia said with a bitterness in her voice. He understood her logic but he had faith in her. Observing her so far, she had treated him better than all the people he had met in his life so far excluding his grandfather. Isn't that a good thing? I'm still weak, you can have my life if you want. Rio teased her but also tested the waters. You're not understanding, Rio. I'm afraid, if father finds out he might kill you without a second thought. You will become the biggest threat to this world if you somehow awaken your innate talent which is sure to happen seeing your potential to make a root and a core at the same time. Lia spoke with a sorrowful glint in her eyes. He gulped nervously and a chill ran down his spine. He understood it was a great blessing but he didn't think the emperor would kill his daughter's husband. Why are you calling me a threat? I'm bound by an oath to never betray you. Never betraying me doesn't guarantee to never betray Azuras. 
Liao looked straight into his sea green eyes. He was speechless and didn't say anything. Listen carefully. Don't ever tell anyone about your stats points or mana and don't reveal your AI watch to anyone including those who you trust most. She spoke with a serious tone and warned him. I don't understand why you're doing this. Hu mumbled. Doing what? Liao looked at him with a frown. Why would you save me who can be a great threat to your world and your family? You only know me for a few days. He was suspiciously looking at her for answers. It's a secret that even my father doesn't know. I will tell you when the time comes. Liao turned around to avoid his questioning gaze. She plucked nine more white eggleshu and gave them to Ryo. There was only one left on the ivy plant after plucking the nine more. He stuffed them in his mouth and they dissolved just as previously. A massive energy rushed towards his root and got absorbed. Nine fruits of white eggleshu eaten. Nine white stats points gained. Ryo smiled at Liao and said, I got another nine white stats points again. But before he could say more or receive her reply, a yellow light enveloped his body. He felt something broke inside him and boosted his bodily limits. He closed his eyes and a surge of mana rushed towards him like honeybees to the flowers. His root and core grew in size by a tiny amount and their color changed to yellow. The light covering his body lowered as time passed and came to an end. He opened his eyes and looked at Lia who was gazing at him with a face filled with tranquility. It's not happening. He remembered her words from earlier and said, so you meant this? Now I get it. Lia nodded her head with the elegance of a noble young lady. He looked behind her at the remaining white eggleshu hanging to the ivy plant. What will happen if I eat one more? He asked with greedy eyes like a hooligan. Find it out yourself, she plucked out the remaining white eggleshu and handed him dot magic. He ate it nervously and the white bead entered his mouth. They dissolved like before and gave him some energy but no text appeared like before. He saw the ivy plant withered and shrank after Lia plucked out the white eggleshu from it. A single tiny bud was formed at the root of the bamboo-like plant. Sorry, I destroyed your white eggleshu plant. Ryo apologized to her with a bitterness in his voice. They aren't destroyed. They will grow back in ten years of time. Lia said with a nonchalant voice as if it wasn't a big deal. Growl. His stomach made an embarrassing sound and revealed the fact he hadn't eaten for thirty hours. Sorry about that. He said with a bittersweet smile and scratched the back of his head. Let's return to our room so we can eat. Lia said and walked towards her villa alongside Ryo. They arrived in their room and Lia prepared another bath for Ryo with the medicinal herbs. He showed little resistance this time for the bathing session and it went smoothly. They ate their dinner and decided to head to sleep. Sun rose in the eastern sky and welcomed a new day as it glistened on top of Empress Villa. Ryo slowly opened his eyes. He yawned lazily and stretched his body. She didn't wake me up in a rough way. He looked around him to find her. Lia was near the dressing table. She was wearing a white dress that bloomed her beauty. Magic. Last night I told her I liked white dress. Is she wearing this for me? Lia saw his movement in the mirror and turned around. You woke up. Father told me to send you to meet him for training. He said you have reached the yellow stage and you should get some combat training. Lia spoke while combing her beautiful white hair. How did he find out? Ryo scrunched his eyebrows as it was only a few hours ago he reached the yellow stage. There are royal guards guarding the castle. You can even see them on the high walls, they may have probably seen you when you were enveloped in yellow light and informed father. Lia said with a stiff voice and put the comb down. I have one more question I wanted to ask you. Why did I have to go through white stage to reach the yellow stage? Didn't the emperor say that it started from the yellow rank cores that humans absorb? Ryo asked with a puzzled face. Lia turned around to look at him and explained, unlike humans, who are dependent on the core to raise their roots, beasts and azuras cultivate for years to raise their core. We azuras start from white stage and you also formed a core using ancient devlin technique so you started from white stage same as an azura. Ads by Pub Future. No hotter female footballer have ever graced the game except her. No hotter female footballer have ever graced the game except her. Add the doesn't that mean humans can also have white stats points if they find a white stage wild beast's core? He asked with a curious smile as if he solved a big problem the world was facing. She shook her head gracefully and said, it doesn't work like that. Wild beasts inherit the same rank of core as their parents when they are still a fetus unlike us azura or humans who have to start from zero. As the river of time flowed there weren't any white stage beasts left as many reproduced when they reached the yellow stage. Won't the same happen to yellow ranked beasts as more time passes and become as rare as unicorns and phoenix feather? He asked as his eyes were filled with questions. It's easy to evolve your core to yellow stage from the white but the journey up ahead is difficult. So many beasts remain in the yellow stage for life. And one more thing, phoenix and unicorn aren't rare in this world. 
Lia said the last part with a hint of pleasure as if to give him shock. What? He looked dazed but then he calmed down a few seconds later as this wasn't Earth and he should be ready for unexpected outcomes. He said after standing up, okay, I'll go meet him but I am not familiar with the castle and where to find him. I have already told Yami. She will bring you to father. Lia said as a mysterious glint flickered in her eyes. Okay, I'll go then. He felt awkward as if Lia wasn't talking to him normally. This was the first time she was sending him with someone else. I'm probably overthinking. He walked out of the room and went downstairs. I would have come with you for combat training but father restricted me to come as I wouldn't be able to see you suffer in pain. Lia sighed inwardly like a doting mother whose child was going on a war for the country. He asked Yami and she brought him to the room where he got his first training class with the emperor. After he reached the room, Yami asked for permission from the emperor and they entered the room. There was one more person standing in the room while the emperor was sitting on his seat. That person turned around to look at Ryo, her red eyes gazed at him as if she was longing for something or someone that she lost but when she saw his sea-green eyes, she stared at him with a murderous intent. She gave an aura of a terrifying wild beast but her figure told differently. She had blonde colored hair that came to her shoulder. She was 174 centimeters tall which made her taller than Lia who was around 168 centimeters. She looked the same age as Lia as she also appeared around 18 years old. Her seductive figure was covered in different armors. She wore a blue dress on top that was white at her perfect sized bosom. A metallic gorget was covered by a blue shawl that was wrapped around her neck and its end was kissing her black greave above her black pants that hid her slender legs. Her hands were covered in black gauntlet and one of her shoulders had a black pauldron. A black scabbard was hanging on her waist that was hiding her weapon. Helia, don't scare him. He is the one you need to train. The emperor said to her. She took back her killing intent from him but she was still looking at him as if he was her prey. Finally, there is someone who will teach this shameless idiot a lesson. Yami bowed to the emperor and left the room while gloating inwardly. She is prettier than Yami and many girls I met but she still pales in comparison to Lia. But, she is looking at me as if I killed her parents. Ryo thought and gulped nervously as a chill ran down his spine. Who is this lioness that's looking at me as if she would chew me alive? Ryo asked the emperor bluntly. Helia raised her eyes at his remarks because he was the first one to make such a comment openly. She is my niece from my late sister. She will give you combat training. Emperor Dylan said. I refuse. A voice sounded in the room but it wasn't Ryo who spoke, it was Helia. Why? Dylan raised his eyebrows at her. You already know why, uncle. She spoke with a chilly voice. That's the more reason I want you to train him since you won't go easy on him and won't show mercy because of me. Dylan chuckled. Hearing his words, Ryo looked at him as if he was teasing him but he could see the emperor was dead serious. Okay, then I'll train this guy if I'm allowed to make him go through the pain and torture however I desire. She smiled coldly which made her look like a psychopath murderer. You can make him go through pain but don't cripple his body parts or anything otherwise Lia will hate us both. Emperor Dylan warned her. She favors him that much? Helia asked Dylan with a frown. Yeah, something like that. The emperor nodded. You two don't have to talk that way about me while I'm here, Ryo said with an annoyed voice. Don't worry, we have a great battle arena. As long as you train there and get any injury, it will be healed. Dylan explained with a sweet smile. I now understand why Lia didn't bring me here. She was worried about me. He sighed as he understood why she was acting differently today than the other day. Okay, Ryo spoke while dropping down his face. Although, he knew it was going to be torture to train under someone who hated him from the moment she saw him. He believed they wouldn't kill him or cripple him as he was Leah's husband. Moreover, he wanted to get better and gain strength to show all those people that called him trash for having no innate talent. Worst case scenario I can send a message to Leah to save me via telepathy. He calmed down as he thought about her dot magic. Then you both should go and start the training, Dylan spoke with a nonchalant voice. Okay, Helia said and left the room without asking Ryo to follow. Emperor indicated to him with his eyes to go with her. Ryo took a long breath and followed behind her like a lamb to the slaughterhouse. They passed the corridor and exited from a big metallic door. Sun was enveloping their figure which was separated by distance as Ryo was following behind her. They entered an open field where an enormous grass field was present but there were other buildings situated at the border of the grass field as well. It was also surrounded by a bigger wall and guards were guarding it. He couldn't find an entrance to go out the walls even here. I have yet to find the main entrance of the castle that led to the outside world. Ryo looked around the field there were many buildings and he was wondering what are they for. He thought to ask Helia but he was afraid she would snap back at him. Helia was moving towards a massive oval-shaped building. 
he entered the battle arena behind her via a big door. The interior of the building reminded him of an indoor sports stadium as well. There were tens of thousands of empty seats around the spacious field. The center of the battle arena was a field with green grasses. There were long trees at the corner of the spacious building that spread green light around the building. These trees look magical. What do they do? He thought inwardly. Slam. The door of the oval-shaped building closed behind him. He felt an ominous feeling as the door locked behind him and the temperature in the room lowered. He could feel a chilly air invading his body and killing intent had frozen him on the spot. He looked ahead of him toward the source of the culprit. The blonde-haired girl who was standing ahead of him disappeared from her place and stood right in front of his face. She grabbed his jaw, stabbing her nails inside his flesh, and looked dead into his sea-green eyes. She yelled in a threatening voice word by word, Do you know what you are? A virus. You, humans, are a disgusting plague. Just like a virus, you humans move to a new area, and you multiply and populate it to the very end to destroy all the natural resources and when you are done, you find a new area to destroy. You, piece of shit, I hate you to the core. I hate all humans. I feel like vomiting just from looking at your disgusting face. You, humans, are vile creatures that would even kill their own kins. I find those wild beasts better than you lowly creatures. I can't stand a second in front of you. She paused and held his jaw roughly to stab her nails into his flesh to engrave more pain which caused the blood to gush out. She continued while smiling maniacally, but, I'll fulfill the order given by the uncle and I'll make every single day of your training a living hell that you will pray to God why you were even born. Her red eyes were full of anger as she wanted to cut him into thousands of pieces. She then pushed him away after saying these words. He was thrown to the ground by her immense strength. Ryo couldn't understand the situation and her personality towards him that took a 180 degree turn after being alone together. He touched his jaw and rubbed it. It was feeling as if a few hot needles pierced him. However, his previous question about the trees got answered as those green lights covered his figure and those wounds made by the nail marks healed. His skin became smooth like before only some bloodstained left which told the story it really happened. He stood up and looked at her in confusion. He couldn't understand anything why she did it to him. What was he supposed to do now after what she did? Her voice sounded, I'm already done with my message to you so you don't ask any nonsense in the future. For the training, I'll attack you from here and you have to dodge it. He frowned hearing her unreasonable words but he was helpless as she didn't even wait for him to reply. She brought out a dagger from thin air. Its deadly sharp blade shone in the light of the illuminating stones that she had already swung in his direction. Before Ryo could even blink his eyes a sharp blade tore apart his newly bought robe and pierced his flesh on the right shoulder. Arg! He cried out in pain. Blood gushed out from it as he felt a great deal of pain spreading. He felt as if hundreds of bees had stung him in the same place. He was from earth and he never experienced a battle where someone used a dagger to pierce his body. There were fights where people used their fists or legs to attack him but no one used such a rough way as a deadly sharp dagger. Don't stay there like a fool. I won't stop attacking you until your body is decorated with ten daggers and gives me pleasure. Your job is to avoid as much as possible. Saying that Helia threw more daggers at him. Swoosh. The air vibrated as it traveled towards him rapidly. Hearing her words and experiencing her actions, he felt he was done for as every cell of his body screamed at him to run away. He moved to the side to avoid her daggers but he was too late and three more daggers stabbed into his right hand tearing apart his clothes along with the flesh. Blood flowed from his right hand continuously and his body felt heavy from the weight of the dagger died in his own blood. He felt so weak in his heart and knees that he knelt on the ground. Is that how much you humans can endure? Let me find out for myself. Helia's chilly voice sounded. Another six daggers flew towards him and pierced his flesh in both of his thighs. He collapsed to the ground and his body cried in agony. He was taking longer breaths and his body was shaking as the pain was invading his mind and body. His clothes turned red from his own blood as they flowed on the ground. He felt as if he was losing consciousness and his body becoming numb. However, at that exact moment, the daggers vanished from his body and a soothing green light embraced him to release him from his misery. The agonizing pain went away and his flesh healed at a faster pace. Within five seconds, he was fully healed. He felt as if he just had a nightmare. He looked towards the source of his living nightmare who was looking at him with an amusing cold smile. She looked as if she was a devil, disguised as a beautiful young maiden to seduce him and release him from his tormenting pain by taking his life. She hurled several more daggers at him but this time he didn't waste time. He rolled to the ground and dodged her attacks. Those blades stabbed into the grassy field. It cut down the green blade of grasses. She raised her eyebrows as he dodged them and recalled the daggers as they disappeared from the spot. 
grass blades that were broken, recovered to normal just how Ryo healed. She threw ten daggers at him fiercely and he jumped to the side to avoid them. He felt a tingling feeling on his back and two of the daggers dig into the flesh of his leg. He grabbed them while crying out in pain and threw them out. Magic. As he did it, he rolled to the ground instinctively to avoid the upcoming daggers which stabbed the place he was before. He got better at avoiding the dagger as time passed but daggers still pierced him from time to time. As he improved at dodging the coming attacks, she increased the number of daggers she threw from 10 to 30. He was pierced by 10 daggers more than 20 times during the training. After pinning him to the ground with 10 more daggers she came to a stop. Tomorrow I'll wait for you here in the morning. Saying that she started walking out of the battle arena building. Wait. He called out with an agonizing voice. What? Her infuriating voice sounded. I have no clue why you hate me but. He paused and stood up while removing daggers from his body one by one. His wounds healed on their own as the healing green light from the trees enveloped him as he took out the blades. Helia narrowed her eyes at him. He continued with a determined voice while throwing away the last dagger, one day I will make you regret it that you will cry for how you treated me unfairly today. I will never have any guilt for treating a garbage like a shit duh. She mocked him. Wanna bet? Rio amusingly said and stared into her red eyes that were filled with coldness. There is nothing to bet about for such a useless thing. You can never make me feel regret for my action today. She snorted at him. Are you scared? He smiled at her to provoke her more. You. She glared at him with her red eyes full of resentment and naked murderous intent. Ha ha ha, I can understand you just know how to oppress the weak and nothing more. But mark my word, one day you will regret and shed tears for your unreasonable action of today. He was making her walk into the trap that he was weaving so he repeated his words again to provoke her. She took a long breath and said, I, Helia Reinhardt, swear on heaven and my core if I ever regret my action today, for making this disgusting creature in front of me, suffer in pain I will accept him as my lord. A golden light flashed and enveloped her then vanished away. What was that? Rio was taken aback. Unbreakable oath. If I ever regret what I did today to you, my core will shatter and my body will crumble. But I'm 100% confident that I will have no guilt even cutting you in thousands of pieces right here right now. Helia proudly smiled. At least you should have said, I will apologize to him or maybe, I won't hate every human blindly without a reason, but why did you have to say I will accept him as my lord? I don't need a lady like you when I already have an angel-like wife who is the most gorgeous in the world. Rio berated her and shook his head. She thought he is a fool for declaring and giving someone randomly the top spot. Just because you find her pretty, she became the most beautiful? What a fool. She mocked him and snorted. I bet even all the Azura in this world would have the same opinion as me and find her as the supreme epitome of beauty. She is beyond the realm of cuteness. Let me say, she is sexy and damn attractive. Her mesmerizing jewel-like red eyes, her beautiful smile, her sense of fashion, her sweet style. Everything she does, everything she says. Makes me cherish her more. She is unforgettably the cutest. She flutters my heart as she is my closest bond in this world. Rio spoke as his eyes were enamored. Who is your wife? She didn't want to believe him but she still asked while narrowing her eyes at him. He cast his Devlin transformation skill and spoke word by word as if announcing the whole world. My wife is the Azura Empress, his crimson hair turned white and grew bigger to the neck length size. His sea green eyes became red and a protective layer enveloped his skin that boosted his aura. Helia stumbled back as she heard his words and saw his Devlin transformation. Her world turned upside down when she saw his Devlin transformation. As the cousin of Lia and niece of Dylan, she was also blood-related to the Devlin family and knew about the secret skill. It was hard for an outsider to learn it. For what reason, he could use this Devlin transformation, Rio answered himself. If what he was saying was true then she wouldn't be able to face Lia again. In this world, I only cherish two people in my heart. First was Big Brother who was the little heaven I lost and the second is Lia who took me out of my sorrow when I was desperate to die. Helia was frozen on the spot and her mind was a mess. She saw a leaf tattoo on his shoulder that was peeking out from his tattered clothes. That's a blessing mentioned in Legends, which is given by heaven to us Azura when two soul mates come together by the wheel of destiny. Her eyes widened seeing the green leaf engraved on his skin which was covered in his blood. Her mind was a mess, her heartbeat was unstable. If this is true then, uncle. She gritted her teeth and left the room before looking at his handsome face which was filled with smugness. Seeing her leave, his Azura transformation deactivated and he came to his real appearance. He swayed in the air and fell to the ground. Thump! Although the healing tree recovered his wounds, he had no stamina or energy left. He was devoid of any energy. He was just giving her a strong confrontation so he could intimidate her to fall for his trap. 
Emperor could ask anyone to give him training but he still picked his niece. That meant he trusted her more than others. His motives behind choosing her were so she won't go easy on Ryo but if he didn't reveal he was Leah's husband she would have killed him or crippled him sooner or later. Although he wanted to play it safe to hide his identity that didn't mean he would risk his life. Emperor Dylan forced him to reveal it. If I didn't do it, she would have made my training days a hell. I hope she shows some resistance tomorrow with her fierce nature. He was laid down on the floor and remembered how he got better at dodging her attacks as time passed. After 15 minutes passed, footsteps sounded. He moved his eyes and saw Yami entering the arena. She walked to him and said, His Excellency told me to clean you first before you go back. He doesn't want the Empress to see you in this condition. Okay. Ryo stood up from the ground and walked out of the battle arena. Sun was about to go down and invite the darkness to welcome the night. Ryo walked alongside Yami and entered the castle. After going through a long corridor, they entered a bathroom that wasn't as majestic as the one in the Empress Villa but it had a similar bathtub with a shower head. Ryo coldly said to her, you wait outside. Okay, Yami said with a polite tone as she felt bad for him after seeing his tattered clothes and blood stains. She placed a set of clothes in the room with a towel and went outside. Ryo enabled the shower head and water washed his long day tormenting memories. His tired body relaxed in the cool droplets of water. He felt as if he had come from a war that went on for many days. The emperor wants to hide it from Lia. Does he fear she will go against him? He mumbled inwardly. Although she acted like she was taking revenge for old grudges. It helped me to improve my battle sense. In the future, I won't have this luxury when I'll fight wild beasts or other humans. His words took a halt as he thought he had to fight others from his race. He sighed and came out of the shower to put on the new clothes she brought. It looked the same as the one he wore before. He walked out of the room and followed Yami to return back. In a spacious room, Emperor Dylan was sitting in front of a blonde-haired girl who was glaring at him. Haha. <laughs> I didn't know he would dare to reveal it himself. Dylan laughed like a grandfather next door. So this is true? She was fuming with anger at her uncle. Yes, as you already know Lia is destined to die on her 22nd birthday and the only way to reverse her destiny was to find a man from another land who would go against heaven's will and all the human race for her. The old man died after saying the time of this man's arrival. So our only hope is to follow his words since he really appeared as the old man said. Dylan said with sorrowful eyes. He hasn't even awakened an innate talent yet, Helia said. That's why I asked you to train him so you can push him to a desperate end where he finds his switch to shake his dormant powers. Dylan chuckled. You knew I detest humans more than anyone or anything yet you made me train him and even said to use pain as long as he doesn't get crippled. If Lia ever finds out she will hate me. Helia clenched her hands and her eyes showed sorrow. But it was a good lesson for you to come out of your blind hate for humans. Now you would have some sense while you come across people from his race. Dylan said with a serious voice. First, this man made me train a human and made me fall for his trap. Second, that annoying boy who provoked me to make an unbreakable oath. She stared dagger at him and understood she had fallen for it. She got played by two annoying men and she walked directly into their crutches. This is why I hate all men. They are devious. She snorted at him and turned to leave. Oh. I just remembered. Didn't you say to Lia that when you grow up you would marry the person she marries? Ha ha ha. Emperor Dylan laughed heartily. Helia, who was about to walk out of the room, almost tripped. Magic. Swoosh. A dagger pierced the air and stabbed into a gap between both of Dylan's thighs. A cold wind passed through his crotch. The emperor stopped laughing and cold sweats poured down his spine. She is vicious. He gulped nervously as this happened and thought of the outcome if she hit his little brother with that sharp blade. Helia walked out of the room without showing her beet red face. Night had already enveloped outside the castle as Rio took an hour to relax in the water. Lia was in the same place as the last time. Little fairies were hovering around her. Yami went to the Empress Villa while Ryo walked towards the lonesome figure whose beauty could cause the downfall of the nation. She turned back to look at him as her face showed worry. Was it painful? That was the first question she asked. No. The trainer is a soft-hearted lady. I was mesmerized by her beauty. But she isn't as pretty as you. Ryo spoke with a smile and hid the truth. I thought father would be harsh on you. You can tell me if they cause any problems for you. She said with a lower voice. Our souls are linked so I can call you for help if the time arises. Don't worry as if I'm a little kid. He said with a bittersweet smile and scratched the back of his head. Why is your hair wet? Lia frowned. I took a bath before coming here as I was covered in sweat. I didn't want you to hate me for stinking like a dead fish. Rio joked as he lied again. I wouldn't hate you. She said with a calm voice, after pausing a little she asked, what did she teach you today? 
She was teaching me how to dodge attacks and improve reaction time. He spoke with a gentle smile hiding the bitterness in his heart as he thought about how she actually taught him by decorating his body with daggers dyed in his blood. She looked at him and contemplated something. Rio was worried his lie was caught. He asked worriedly, what happened? I was thinking how you still don't have a weapon and what would suit you. With the Devlin skill, a sword would match you perfectly. Come with me. Lia said and brought Rio to the other side of the garden. There was a tree with swords hanging on them with yellow leaves. It was three meters tall and the crown spread in a two meter range. He could see the swords hanging on the tree as fruits. There were three types of swords hanging from this yellow leaf tree. They all looked silver in color but their sizes and aura differed. The most majestic one was only one in number hanging in the center of the yellow leaf tree. You are already at the yellow stage so it won't be a problem for you to have your first beast soul. This is the silver bloom tree and these sword-like fruits you see are the beast souls. Liao explained while pointing to the sword-like fruits hanging from the tree. Beast souls can grow on trees? Doesn't that mean we can lower the killing rate of beasts if we grow these in higher numbers? He spoke in an astonished voice as his eyes shone with the light of hope. How will you provide your fellow humans with cores to absorb the stats points? She said with an amusing voice and poured water to extinguish the tiny spark of hope he had to solve the problem of both worlds. She continued after enjoying the contrasting expression on his face which changed quickly, besides, these trees are very rare. You would only see them in my garden or in case you come across a lucky encounter. Rio dropped down his shoulder and looked as if covered in a dark smoke of desperation. Lia extended her jade-like smooth hand and a light covered a sword-like fruit, the one in the middle that looked special among other beast souls hanging on the silver bloom tree. It detached from the tree's branch and flew to her like a falling leaf. She grabbed it gracefully and handed it to Rio who looked at the sword in amazement. He took the sword which felt dull and as if dormant. It looked like a doll more than a real sword and looked at Liao with questioning eyes to ask if she was teasing him. Pour some of your mana in it and this beast soul will become bound to you. She said with a gentle voice. Rio did as she said and a tiny amount of mana rushed towards the hilt of the sword. It vibrated as it received his mana and the dormant looking toy came to life. A silver light glowed and bloomed like a lotus spreading its charm. It was a one meter long double edged sword of lightweight composition with a blooming flower petal shape on its hilt, which was yellow. Besides being sharp and strong, the sword gave a chilly aura and glimmered in the moonlight. Magic. Whoa. His face blossomed with a smile and he felt he made a connection to the sword in his hand. Beast Soul of Yellow Stage Silver Bloom King gained. He heard an AI voice in his mind which confirmed his suspicions. He was smiling ear to ear when he remembered there were swords of three different sizes on the tree. Why were there three types of beast souls on the same tree? He asked her while he inspected his new sword. There are three tiers among beast soul on each stage for the same type. Normal, mutated, and king. You can recognize them on the tree. There is always one king among these beast souls when they grow in trees so the one you have is the silver bloom king beast soul. Lia said and cleared his doubts. How long will it take them to grow another silver bloom king sword? He asked her while gazing at her alluring face which was making the moon in the night sky jealous of her elegance. It will take a few years, she spoke and looked at him waiting for his next question as if she knew what he would ask next. Why did you give it to me then? He asked, puzzled. What do you think? She answered with another question. Her face looked mysterious while her eyes were amusingly looking at the naive boy whose face was puzzled. She continued, you haven't taken your medicinal bath today. We should return. They started walking back to the villa while Lia said, you can store the beast soul in your mind see. Just command it to return with a thought. What's mind see? He raised his eyes. Just do it you will understand. She said and walked alongside him towards the villa. He commanded the sword to return and it disappeared from his hand. He saw in his mind a dark room and a light flickered inside. The silver bloom king sword appeared there while glowing in light and stayed in the dark room which Lia called mind see. He was surprised as he experienced it first hand. He tried calling it again and the sword appeared in his hand while the hilt was placed on his hand perfectly. This is amazing. He mumbled. Lia made him bathe in medicinal herbs and made him go through another torment of pain with hot water. It wasn't as bad as the training with Helia so he didn't mind it much. They ate their dinner and slept for the day. The next day, Rio woke up early for training and ate a light breakfast before leaving the villa. Yami took him to the castle where he changed his clothes to a single combat practicing robe. It was a simple gray shirt and black pants. He went towards the battle arena and arrived to find out that Helia was already waiting there. Although he was late, she didn't stare at him like a vampire hungry for his blood. Today I'll teach you how to use a weapon, she said while nervousness painted her face. After saying the first sentence she relaxed and broke the awkwardness between them. 
She continued, do you have any weapon you want to practice with? Ryo chuckled and said, I just received one yesterday. With a single thought to his mind see, a one meter long sword appeared in his hand. That's the Silver Bloom King sword from Leah's garden. To give him a beast soul from her garden, which she doesn't even let anyone touch, shows his importance in her heart, Helia thought inwardly. He swung his sword as he watched on TV and she shook her head in disappointment seeing how her sister was married to this foolish guy who didn't even know how to use a sword. I'll train him well so he can be worthy of her and protect her. A light of determination flickered in her eyes and she inspected Ryo from head to toe. He stopped swinging his sword foolishly as he felt her hot gaze which was different from yesterday. Why do you all Azura girls love to look at my sexy body as if it's a heavenly treat for your eyes? I prefer that murderous intent filled in your gaze to how you looking at me now. Ryo took his steps back and stumbled. Attack me with your sword however you want. Saying that Helia appeared in front of him and a sword appeared in her hand different from the one present on her waist. She swung her sword towards him who tightened his grip on his sword and met with her strike. He was pushed away by the impact and his hand felt numb. Before he could even relax, she slashed at him vertically and he had to place his sword in a horizontal way to stop it in track from striking him. His steps dragged on the ground as he collided with her strike while grasses were ruined by his shoes as a line was formed from the impact. Her attacks are too overpowered. He was pushed from one side to another side of the battle arena as she attacked him continuously. After 30 minutes he was breathing heavily as he lay on the ground while spreading his hands and legs. Magic. Why are you not using mana enchantment? She asked him with questioning eyes that were glaring at him fiercely. What's mana enchantment? He said while turning his neck in her direction to gaze at her. Those filthy humans didn't even teach you how to use mana enchantment? How can they be so useless? She snorted in a dissatisfied voice. I have only recently reached the yellow stage and my school will start in a few weeks. He said while looking at the ceiling of the building and avoiding her beast-like gaze which was filled with anger for humans once again. How about your family? Didn't they give you basic knowledge about mana usage? She asked in her usual dominating tone. I am an orphan, I grew up alone although the Haven Glow family adopted me out of nowhere a month ago. I was reluctant to join them but I was forced by the government since they are one of the most influential families in my world. He said with a bittersweet smile and sat up on the ground. Helia tightened her fist as she saw a longing emotion flickering in his eyes. She also lost her mother and brother but she knew how it felt to have a family. Emperor Dylan and Lia never treated her like an outsider. But he never had a family before. He doesn't even know how it feels to be around someone who loves you. She is my closest bond in this world. So he wasn't lying. Revelation enveloped her mind as she started seeing him in a different light than others of his race. He stood up and faced her with his sword but her voice made him halt in his track. I'll teach you how to use mana enchantment. It is a technique to infuse your body parts with little mana to increase their efficiency. The more mana you infuse the stronger they will become and you will be able to infuse higher strength. Make sure to pour little mana, the amount your body can endure, otherwise, your flesh and muscle will start cracking slowly. You also need to keep monitoring your mana usage as a one-time infusion can only last up to 10 minutes of enhancement in strength. Helia explained with a stiff voice. Ryo became dumbfounded hearing her explanation then he saw her extending her hand which started glowing blue. Try it, her cold voice came. He extended his hand like her and tried sending mana towards his hand. After pouring mana for a little, his hand started aching. Arg! He cried out in pain. Don't be hasty. Just use a little mana. She berated him. He only sent a little mana this time and his hand also glowed blue. He felt as if his hand was breathing with the strength to tear apart the trees and break the stony boulders. Pour mana in your sword in a similar way. Since it's a beast soul it will be easier for you to do it. She commanded him like a general to her soldiers. He did as she said. The Silverbloom King sword aura doubled and felt as if roaring its glory to the world. She moved towards him with her sword and attacked him. This time he felt the numb feeling in his hand lessened but he was still pushed backward and he gripped his sword tightly. Try pouring mana in your legs and eyes. Her domineering voice sounded in his ears. He sent little mana to his eyes and legs. His eyes glowed blue and he saw the surroundings become slower. He could see the veins of the leaf of the healing tree in the corner of the arena. His legs cried out in strength and he felt he could jump to touch the ceiling. He curled his knees. A few seconds later, like an arrow released from the bowstring, he rushed towards her at an incredible speed. A smile blossomed on his face. Oh, the cub will now attack his mother after its claw grew, Helia spoke with a mocking smile and waited for his upcoming strike. You're not my mommy, Rio said and attacked her head on. Her face had become red from hearing his remark mommy. 
She had heard from maids that among lovers a male partner called their female partner mommy if they were older. Some people used this word among lovers so her face was flushed like a cherry thinking Rio might be younger than her as he looked 16. The sword collided and she wasn't prepared which caused a slice on her blue top. Her cloth tore apart slightly and blood gushed out from it revealing her pale shoulder. She jolted awake from her embarrassment seeing her cloth tearing apart. A chilly aura enveloped Rio and he felt a coldness creep up to his spine. He was attacked countless times. They collided in the air twenty times in a span of one minute but their figure was moving at a face pace. It looked as if a video was playing in rapid motion. I didn't know you and Leah. I still don't regret my actions. Although I am forbidding myself from drawing your blood. I'll teach you a lesson for making this lady angry, Helia snorted inwardly. Rio was punched on his body and kicked on his butt many times while their swords hit each other. After an hour of colliding in the arena, Rio ran out of mana and collapsed on the ground. She enjoyed seeing him groaning on the ground. It took 30 minutes instead of an hour to recover his full mana due to the special effect of the healing tree. They started once again. He started learning her pattern but her speed was faster. The fierce combat practice continued until they heard a door, creaking, sound as someone entered the arena. Magic. It was Yami standing near the entrance. Her face flashed with astonishment as she saw it was Helia whose clothes were torn apart with blood while Rio's clothes were only covered in dirt. Tomorrow at the same time, Helia said before leaving the battle arena avoiding Yami's curious gaze that was staring at her torn clothes. Seeing Yami come to fetch him, he followed her to the castle. She was giving him a curious look from time to time. He took a bath and returned back. He met Lia in the garden and she asked him to they should go back. Let's sit here for a while, Rio said to her and sat on the ground in front of the big tree that had rainbow-colored fruits and white glowing leaves. Little fairies were hovering around it. Okay. Lia also sat beside him and they watched the palm-sized fairies dancing around them. His routine for the next few weeks was similar. In the morning after breakfast, he would practice with the fierce girl Helia who fought with him until the evening. With time, he was able to dodge her attacks and land more strikes on her. She started increasing the strength used for him which made him understand she was going easy on him from the very start. In the evening, he would bathe and sit with Lia in the garden to enjoy the beauty of moonlight, fairies, and especially his wife. She would make him bathe in medicinal herbs and have their dinner before they went to bed. As the days passed, Ryo improved greatly in sword fighting and gained massive combat experience. He became closer to Lia but felt a distance from Helia as she still gave him cold treatment in combat training. On the 27th night after coming to the land of the Azura, Ryo and Lia were walking in the garden when Yami came hurriedly. Your Highness, please return to the villa. A prisoner has run away. It's unsafe here. She said with a grave tone. Who ran away? She asked with a frown. I don't know your highness. She bowed to her. Okay, we will return back. You can go now. She said with a cold voice as she remembered her dream from the morning. Yami bowed to her and left. My eyes of destiny gave me another dream. She was contemplating and thinking about the dream from the morning in which Yami and his father were talking about a secret plan behind her back. Ryo asked while facing her, what prisoners do you guys keep here in the castle? His voice jolted her awake but before she could answer him she saw Rio's eyes flickered with murderous intent who was standing in front of him and facing her. His figure disappeared from her sight and she felt a strong gust of wind behind her. A sound of flesh cutting was heard in her ears and she turned around to see as a sword pierced Rio's shoulder and protruded from the other side along with his flesh as well as blood. Hot crimson blood spurted from it and splattered on her fairy-like face as Rio took the strike on himself that was coming for her. A human was standing there whose sword had stabbed Rio's shoulder. He was tall and bulky but his body was marked with many cuts. He looked injured and lacked energy. He appeared behind them out of nowhere and was about to strike Lia when Rio saw him. If he wasn't skilled how could he escape the eyes of many guards and even Lia who didn't feel his appearance when he appeared behind her, magic. She was contemplating her dream so she could have missed it. But she felt something was fishy behind this whole incident. The bulky man laughed evilly and pointed his empty hand towards Lia but before he could do anything. A scythe enveloped in black smoke howled in a terrifying voice and struck him vertically as his body split in two. Blood came out of his body like a red flower blooming. A cloud of black smoke covered his body and started burning in black fire. Rio, who just used his skill, Judgment of Devlin, after Devlin movement technique, grabbed the blade of the sword out of his shoulder and threw it away. The bulky man's body was incinerated by the vicious black flames of his strike. Rio gritted his teeth and fell to his knees. Blarg. He puked out everything he ate last night while tears flowed from his eyes. Lia held his body from behind and patted his back. Blarg. 
he vomited again and felt devoid of energy from body and mind. Executing that strike had taken his 90% of mana but killing a human for the first in his life made him filled with disgust and guilt. Lia supported him to stand up. He looked dazed while Lia embraced him from the back to help him walk. He was unable to calm his mind and she understood his mental state. The black flames dissipated, and only the badly charred body remained. Yami had already run to Lia but she was stopped in her track after seeing Ryo's condition. Emperor arrived with guards there as hearing the commotion. He called for a priest and it came soon after as if already prepared in advance. The priest cast a healing spell on Ryo and his wound healed at a visible speed. Although the physical injury vanished the mental blow was still there which shook him to the core. Young boy. It seems like you have never killed anyone before. Emperor Dylan said with some concern and paused to look at the charred corpse to the side. He continued, that prisoner was at black stage. Even if he was injured, it's praiseworthy that you were able to finish him with only one strike. He needs to rest, Lia said with a chilly voice to him. Saying that she started moving towards her villa while supporting Ryo. Let me help you, your highness. Yami came forward to help but Lia placed her hand in front of her and made her stop her footsteps. Emperor sighed seeing how his daughter was treating him and Yami after Ryo got injured. They walked slowly towards the Empress villa and entered their room. She supported him to sit on the king-sized bed and sat beside him. What are you worrying about? Her sweet voice sounded beside him. I killed someone. I'm a murderer. Ryo, who didn't reply to the emperor, spoke for the first time after killing the prisoner in a sorrowful voice. Tears dropped from his eyes like a little child. Lia caressed his head and asked, if you were given a chance to turn back time, would you spare him and let him attack me? She blew a landmine in his thought process as he started looking at her with astonished wet eyes. Tell me. Would you spare him, Ryo? Lia asked again with a sweet voice as if a mother was telling her little child not to cry for his broken toys. He shook his head while gazing at her loving expression towards him. Then calm down. Tears don't suit you. She said as she wiped his tears from his wet face with her fingers stroking his cheeks. But it's not easy. I killed him. He looked dazed and sorrowful. In this world, and I believe even in your world they kill each other. Some kill others for greed, ego, blinding in power and for many bad reasons which is a sinful act. However, there are those like you who wield a weapon to save the innocents and people they love. It's not wrong to kill someone for saving someone you care about. Lia spoke with a sweet voice to lower his guilt. He blinked at her continuously and felt the knot of guilt getting loose when she twisted words to make him realize he wasn't entirely wrong. He dropped down his face as the flashback of killing the human came back to his mind. At the same time, he felt a soft hand wrapped around his back. A flowery scent invaded his nostril and his face was buried in her soft bosom. He enjoyed his face on her featherly warm chest. An electric shock made the hair of his pores stand up from such actions but it wasn't from his lustful thoughts. It was because of her lovingly caring nature towards him to make him feel better. Instinctively, his hands also wrapped around her back. She caressed the back of his head and he relaxed in her loving embrace. A boy who grew up alone without any love. A boy who had no family and loved ones. For this boy, this was his first hug he could ever remember. His heart tickled and felt the warmth of love for the first time in many years. He felt as if he was in heaven, he forgot all his mental tiredness and the agony of guilt. He relaxed in her loving embrace. Thank you, he mumbled in her thoughts. Why thank you? She asked back in his thoughts. For being nice to me, he replied. Shouldn't I be nice to my innocent husband who just killed someone for saving me? She giggled. Don't remind me, he retorted. Lia supported him to lay down on bed and slept while Lia kept him in her embrace. She kept ruffling his hair as if he was a little child. Those nightmares that the eyes of destiny gave me changed since our soul linked by heaven's blessing. Last defense in my heart against you was shattered when I saw that killing intent in your eyes to protect me. You change my fate or not, I won't treat you unfairly. She spoke in her heart. Stars glimmered around the moon as if celebrating the beautiful night and two souls of two different worlds accepting each other in their hearts. Lia woke up to the sensation of something pressing against her chest. When she opened her eyes, she saw a crimson-haired boy's head was snuggling to her bosom, his hands wrapped around her like hugging a pillow. Her face flushed red but then she remembered what happened last night and how she comforted him. She calmed down and gently rolled Rio off her body. She sighed in relief when she saw that he was still sleeping. She stood up and started getting ready to go to the castle. In a room, a middle-aged man with white hair was sitting on a couch. He was having his tea while reading the reports of the activities happening recently. Magic. He heard light footsteps approaching his door. The person didn't even ask for permission and slammed open the door. Why did you do this? A chilly atmosphere enveloped the room as Lia coldly glared at the Emperor Dylan. What do you mean, Lia? 
He tried to hide his nervousness. He knew this would eventually happen but he didn't know it would happen this early. Don't pretend to not know anything. You know what I'm talking about. Why did you plan this behind my back to test Ryo? She fiercely stared at him. Oh, you're talking about last night. The guards were drunk last night and they mistakenly left the keys inside. I already ordered those guards to be executed for making such a mess. Emperor Dylan said with a bittersweet smile. I already saw you and Yami to plan about it in my destiny vision. You don't have to fabricate more lies. She berated him. He started avoiding his gaze from her as he heard he was caught red-handed. Answer me. Why did you do this without my permission? Her domineering voice was sounding in the room. He would be leaving for his school. I needed to test him before he left. If he can't even go against one human, how will he face the whole of humanity for you? Emperor Dylan said while his eyebrow scrunched. You can't just treat him like he is your experimental rat. Don't forget he is my husband. She said with a threatening tone. I don't have much time left, Lia. A saddened voice came from the Emperor Dylan. His voice halted as he recollected an upcoming grave problem. He continued, the demonic red worm will consume my heart in less than three years. I want Ryo to be ready before I leave this world. We don't know which clan will turn their fangs against the royal family after I leave. You're not strong enough to face them alone, neither is Helia. If the old man's prophecy is true then Ryo would be the one dot magic. I just want him to be ready for that day. It cannot happen if I go easy on him. He already passed my tests with full marks. He even tamed Helia who hates the mere sight of humans. Dylan spoke in a sorrowful glint in his eyes. You made them meet knowing she would despise him? She narrowed her eyes. Don't worry. She trained him all these days and she also said he is not like other humans. She was telling me how she saw a sad longing for his family as he is an orphan. Dylan said with a smile as he remembered the violent Helia telling him about Rio when they had a cup of tea together. Helia trained him all these days and she even felt pity for him? Leah's eyes were astonished after hearing the story. She remembered their conversation. Was it painful? No. The trainer is a soft-hearted lady. I was mesmerized by her beauty for a little. But she isn't as pretty as you. Her heart felt warm as she remembered how he praised her while comparing to her own cousin sister. I was monitoring their training so he was safe. But I needed them to get along well so they can both support you. If Helia parted ways with you because of Rio, then you would have lost one of the most trusted aides and one of the strongest sword by your side. He said with a nonchalant voice. I don't want you to force things on Rio. If you harm him for your political motives then don't blame me for being unreasonable. The white-haired beauty coldly spoke to Dylan and turned around to leave the room. Dylan dropped down his shoulders and sighed in disappointment as he realized how his daughter treasure a foreign boy a lot in less than four weeks. Rio woke up to the sound of footsteps. When he opened his eyes he saw Lia entering the room. She had a coldness painted on her face and eyes but when she saw Rio was gazing at her, it melted down and became warm. Did you sleep well? She asked him while entering the room. Yes, but I don't remember anything before I slept. How did I end up in your bed? Did you take advantage of my enticing body last night? Rio asked her with doubtful gaze in sarcastic manner while fearing she might get mad. What kind of question is that? Your body and soul are mine by the law of heaven as I'm your wife. Tell me if I'll not take advantage of your enticing body, then human girls will do? She asked with serious voice while crossing her arms in front of him and her eyes were filled with a mischievous glint. That? I mean, aren't we going so fast? Shouldn't we start by holding hands first? Rio said while his face became red and he stammered while speaking. Lia forced herself to not laugh seeing his reaction. Last night there was a prisoner who tried to attack me and you saved me by killing him. She spoke with a gentle voice and helping him to recall what happened. Realization struck him as he remembered what happened. His face darkened at first then it changed back to beet red as he remembered how he was crying in her embrace and how she hugged him to sleep while ruffling his crimson hair. Sorry. I just remembered now what happened. He said with a bittersweet smile and scratched the back of his head. Go wash your face. Yami would be bringing food soon. You had threw out all the food last night. Your stomach will start roaring if you don't eat soon. She spoke to him while going to dressing table. Okay. Ryo went to wash his face while Lia was doing her hair. After some times, Ryo came out of bathroom to find Yami was going out of room with the cart while food's bowls were placed on the portable table. They ate together while he kept peeping at her face time to time. He was afraid she would be mad for the last night. They finished the food together and Yami came back to clean up before leaving the couple together. Will you not go for your training today? She asked him. My classes will be starting soon. They told us to report to school after we find our superior at shelter or we teleported to foreign shelters. I'm here for 28 days now. They would be thinking I'm either dead, lost or captured. 
Although there aren't anyone to worry about me I still need to go back. Ryo spoke with a bitterness in his voice. Who said there aren't anyone to worry about you? She narrowed her eyes at him as the room temperature lowered. I meant in other world. He gulped nervously as he was worried she would hit him again. That's better. She coldly said and continued, when are you going back then? Today, if that's fine? He probed her. When will you come back? She spoke with a hopeful glint in her eyes. Never. Rio joked while keeping a serious tone. When will you come back? She spoke with a hopeful glint in her eyes. Never. Rio joked while keeping a serious tone. Bang, 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 bang. Nine consecutive punches were gifted to Rio as his joke gone wrong. Ah. He rubbed his shoulder and looked at the source of violence. Say that again. She coldly glared at him. Magic. I mean I'll return in one to two months, he said to test the waters again. For some reason, he liked to tease her after their bonding became stronger last night. Bang, 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 bang. Ah, sorry. I was wrong. Forgive me, your highness. Rio begged for mercy but the violence continued. She hit him with both hands while he placed his hands in a defensive manner to protect his head. Bang, 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 bang. I'll listen to my lord's decision and come back whenever she says, he said while groaning in pain from the rain of her fist which wasn't filled with mana but a normal fist attack. Her violent giveaway stopped after he spoke the words she wanted to listen to. She took out an old scroll from her storage type beast soul and sat beside Ryo. Try learning this skill from this magic scroll. Lia handed him a thick brown paper that was three times larger than his both palms. What is this? He scrunched his eyebrows as he inspected the scroll. It's a teleporting skill that will lead you to the home that you set. I'm not sure if it will work from another world but if you mistakenly get teleported to another shelter in this world you can always use this to return back home. Lia said with a nonchalant voice. That's amazing. But how to use this? Ryo looked at the scroll and he couldn't understand anything. Just drop a blood of yours and you will find out. She said while bringing out a needle. Okay, he took the needle from her hand and pricked his finger. A drop of blood fell on the scroll which spread to cover the whole scroll. It started hovering in front of them before burning in red flames. Ryo's mouth became agape seeing what was taking place in front of him. An AI voice sounded in his mind. You have acquired the ancient astral recall technique. A string of information flooded in his mind and information floated on the floating screen. He checked the two new skill names that appeared in his profile skill section. Astral home fixation, mark a location as the astral home. Mana, 90% of your total mana. Cooldown, 30 days. Astral recall, teleport you back to astral home. Casting time, 3 seconds. Mana, sepulu. Cooldown, 1 hour. His eyes shone as he read this skill's information. He tried using the first skill and a white light enveloped the couch they were sitting on. Why did you use it here? Lia frowned at his action. Where should I use it then? He asked with questioning eyes. You could have set it in one of the rooms we have in the villa. She berated him. Is there a problem if I set it here? He asked in confusion. What if I'm changing and you teleported here? She asked with a beet red face. He coughed and said while mimicking her tone from earlier, what kind of question is that? Your body and soul are mine by the law of heaven as I'm your husband. Tell me if I'll not see your enticing body, then who will do? Bang, 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 bang. The punches fell on him after that for a pretty long time. His screams were heard by the guards and Yami below the stairs. After some time passed, she accompanied him to the portal capsule in the castle. He acted like a good boy as if he learned his lessons this time to never tease this demoness. They stood near the portal that was like a medicine capsule. Come back as soon as possible or you know what will happen, Lia said to him with a threatening tone. Yes, your highness. I'll remember that. He said politely fearing she would beat him for another half hour before he leave. Good. She smiled. Does my lord have any other orders? He said while putting his hands on his chest and bowing. Take care of yourself and don't let them find out who you're, she said with worried eyes. Okay, I'll go now then. See you later. He said and started going towards the capsule while waving his hand without turning back. Am I forgetting something? He frowned while entering the portal capsule. He was forgetting something but he was unable to remember. What am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? He tapped his watch that rang with some notification sounds and synced with the portal as its door closed. Leah's eyes were filled with sorrow as she saw the capsule door closed. However, it opened again making a sound of capsule door opening and a figure came out. 
Her eyes widened as she saw the scene in front of her. A crimson-haired boy ran toward her before stopping in front of her and said, I forgot something. What? She asked with a puzzled face. She saw his face coming closer to hers which caused her heartbeat to beat faster. She closed her eyes as he kept getting closer. A hand wrapped around her alluring body as she found herself enveloped in a warm embrace. She could feel his hot breath on her neck as he hugged her. Rio hugged her as it filled both their body and mind with serenity. They were both resonating with a moment of bliss. They stayed like that for a few seconds as if not wanting to part away before a whisper sounded in Leah's ears. This. Saying that he ran back towards the capsule before closing the door. Leah was frozen happy in her place while she looked dazed. She never thought he would be courageous enough to do this although she wanted to do the same but it was a man's duty to take the charge even in her world. A few seconds later, the capsule opened and there was nobody inside. Leah sighed and started walking towards the villa which now felt empty without that human boy who had become an important part of her life. Blinding white light faded, and he was in front of a silver-painted door. The feeling of getting teleported made him feel a little nauseous. He couldn't get used to it while using it only twice. The portal capsule door opened and he walked out of the portal. The two guards at the entrance of the gate were different from the ones he saw when he first used the portal. He walked out of the portal room and saw it was night outside. No wonder guards are different. It's nighttime here. I should report first to the school office about my return magic. The moonlight glittered on his silhouette as he started walking towards the school office. The school campus was expanded into an enormous area. The portal capsule was situated at the entrance of the school gate but it was inside the campus. There were trees on both sides of the path he was following. The school office was the first building on the left side. Behind it was a dormitory and on the right side was a shopping area. He could see senior year students and teachers leaving and entering the shopping area. He ignored them and went straight to his destination. In the office, there was a scrawny middle-aged man working on a computer. His eyes moved towards Rio and he raised his eyebrows seeing an unfamiliar person at the late hour coming to the office. The crimson-haired boy looked to be a first-second-year student by his appearance. Since he never saw this boy coming to the office. He guessed that he was either from another school or a new student. I came to report about my shelter in the land of Azura, Rio said. Isn't it too late? What were you doing for so long? The middle-aged man asked. I was teleported to an unoccupied shelter. It was surrounded by a snowy mountain. I went to look for places around the shelter but then when I came back I saw a beast near the portal. I hid in the storage room and waited for the beast to leave but it didn't leave until today. He said with a bittersweet smile and scratched the back of his head. Where did you find the food? The middle-aged man asked with a doubtful gaze. Storage room had an emergency food supply. Due to the shelter being located on a snowy mountain, food didn't spoil much and it was edible. He said with a nonchalant voice. The middle-aged man felt pity for him. He said, it was unfortunate, kid. At least you weren't teleported to Azura's and you came back alive. There are still 11 students missing who didn't come back. Show me your student ID so I can update your information in the school database. Who said I wasn't teleported to the Azuras? Oh, wait, where is my student ID? Rio patted both of his pant side pockets hurriedly to see if they were still there. Found it, it's here. He delighted inwardly and took out from the left one. He saw they had marks of being washed in water but the school ID was made of waterproof material so it wasn't ruined. Here, he showed it to the middle-aged man while thinking, it probably got washed along with my clothes when Liam made me bathe for the first time. The middle-aged man's face changed after reading the surname on the school ID. I updated your information in the school database. He said it while hiding his surprised expression from the boy. Okay, thanks. I'll go now. Saying that Rio started moving towards the door to leave. The middle-aged man dialed a number after confirming Rio left the place and couldn't hear him. After a few seconds, someone received his phone call. The middle-aged man spoke, informed the madam, Rio Havenglow is alive and he has returned. As the school database got updated, news of Rio's coming back reached people who were waiting for his arrival or were worried about him. A gray-haired middle-aged man in one of the rooms on the top floor of the teacher's living quarters was preparing a report for the new class that was going to start in two days. Ding! His phone rang to show the notification that he received a message. He looked at his phone screen and a mixed expression of astonishment and happiness flashed on his face. Oh, he finally came back. The school headmaster sighed in relief. In one of the buildings at the Grand Du Garden, the VIP quarter for special students in Rio School, a magenta-haired lady who looked to be 17 to 18, saw her phone and smiled at the notification. Oh boy, you made this lady wait for you so long. A mysterious smile formed on her face. 
In a luxurious room, a blue-haired woman in her mid-thirties was looking at a picture of another young lady. The blue-haired woman's face looked sorrowful. The young lady in the picture resembled the blue-haired woman but she was prettier and her eyes gave an aura of tranquility. She looked more mature even when she appeared younger in the photo as if she had faced many hardships and battles at a very young age. A notification rang beside her and she checked the phone screen. Little Rio is back, she cheerfully said in a loving voice as a delightful and vibrant expression took over her previous saddened face. She hurriedly stood up and took her overcoat to leave the room. Rio, who wasn't aware of all of this event, caused by the effect of arrival, was freely moving towards the entrance of the gate. I should rent a room for tonight. It's bad to disturb the Haven Glow family late at night. I might feel more comfortable at a hotel than at their house. He thought to himself as his footsteps reached the entrance. It was ten at the night and the road was lit with streetlights. A stylish red racing car came rushing in his direction. Before he could take a step to the side to give it away to pass, it stopped in front of him. The car door opened upwards in a stylish manner and a blue-haired lady came out of it. Her blue hair was coming down to her waist which was tied with a white ribbon near the neck of her neck. She was wearing an overcoat and a casual dress which indicated she didn't prepare much before rushing out to reach this place. Rio was dumbfounded seeing this lady come out of the blue. Before his mind could respond to her sudden arrival, she moved toward him and took him in a warm embrace. Little Rio, I shouldn't have let you go to the land of Azura. Do you have any idea how worried I was? She said with a sorrowful voice. As if remembering something, she let him go of her hug and started inspecting his face and body, are you alright? Did you get hurt anywhere? Why are you showing so much care? Rio rudely asked her with a stiff voice. Magic. Who talks to their mother this way? If I do not care about you then who will? She looked at him with eyes full of warmth. I'm not your child and you adopted me two months ago. It doesn't make sense for you to show care for a nobody out of nowhere. Even if you were my real parents, I would have talked to you the same way. Rio said coldly. She looked at him with widened eyes as if she couldn't understand why he hated those two people so much. They abandoned me as if I was trash. I don't understand why people plan a child if they don't have the guts to take care of the child's responsibility. He spoke with a darkened face as a flame of grievance fluttered inside his heart. He isn't wrong but, after hearing these words she understood him. She can't blame him for how he grew up all alone. No one should be devoid of their loved one when they are little. When he used to see other parents his eyes always got moist. People had other relations besides parents. Those without their mother and father had siblings or grandparents but he had an old man who had adopted him. Even the old man passed away in old age after which Rio's life became hell. When he was sick, he had no one to take care of him or feed him. He stayed hungry or dragged his poor body to the hospital in the worst-case scenario on his own. He continued with a bitter voice, even if you were my real mother and found me out of nowhere I would still question you why you are showing so much care all of a sudden as if realizing you have a child after 16 years. She quietly looked at him and her expression showed hesitation. Should I tell him who his parents are? But it will be a problem if others find out. Father might kick him out of the family knowing his birth parents' identity as it will remind him of the man he hates the most. He, I won't tell you who your parents were but I'll tell you about them so you don't hate those two. She struggled so much but finally decided to reveal enough so he doesn't hate them. You know my parents? As if someone blew a landmine under his foot, he was shaken to the core hearing her words. He grabbed her by both shoulders, which came to his nose only despite wearing high heels. A fierce look of curiosity shone on his face. She nodded while her eyes became moist. Seeing her nod, his heartbeat became fast and he looked astonished while his eyes were staring at her to speak more to satisfy the thirst of his curiosity that he had for a long time. He also wanted to know why they would leave a little child to grow on his own. After seeing the longing in his eyes for the answers, she decided to speak but she needed to leave as they were at the entrance of the school's gate. Get into the car, I'll tell you but not here. She spoke in a loving tone. Rio let go of her shoulder and walked to the other side of the car. He opened the door and sat inside. The blue-haired lady sighed and went inside the car. She started the engine as it roared and burst out of the school periphery. She drove directly to the Maple Hills area which was owned by the Haven Glow family. It passed through an empty road and entered a gate guarded by two security guards. Magic. The gate automatically opened as it was set up by artificial intelligence. Inside the gate, it resembled a garden. A beautiful fountain was located at the front of an enormous two-story house. The car suddenly came screeching to a halt in front of the house. A blue-haired lady came out of the car along with Rio and they entered the house. He had come here before but right now it was late at night so he couldn't find anyone as they might be in their own room. The blue-haired lady took the stairs and went to her bedroom. 
Ryo followed her inside even though he thought it wasn't right but he wanted to know the answer. Take a seat. I'll prepare food for you. You haven't eaten good food for a long time. Thankfully you found a storage room or I don't want to even think what would have happened. She said with a worried voice after putting the overcoat on her bed. She knew what happened to him as she read the information on the school database. Ryo placed his right hand in front of him to make her stop in her tracks. Do you think I would want to eat in this state of mind? I want the answers first. Tell me how could they be so unreasonable and how could they abandon their child? Tell me who they are and where they live so I can ask them myself. He spoke and his voice shook. A grievance was flickering in his tone. The blue-haired woman looked into his eyes full of resentment. She said, I will tell you but I have a condition. What condition? He frowned coldly. I'll only tell you enough so you don't hate them but I'll tell you about their identity if you get into the top 10 ranking in the next upcoming military school tournament. Do you agree? She asked with a questioning voice. He gritted his teeth but he had no option, okay. Oh, I forgot. I have one more condition, you have to call me the second mother, she said. Okay, but it will depend on your relationship with my parents and if I forgive them after knowing what you say. He contemplated a little but agreed. He could see a concerned look in her eyes since he met her. He never understood her unreasonable love and why she adopted him but today he would get to know. Rio, your parents didn't abandon you. They are not selfish people who will do bad to their own blood and flesh. They didn't do wrong to you. It was the fate of this world that caused it. Sixteen years ago, they were attacked by the Davrik's race and you were in your mother's womb for nine months at that time. Your father went to face the enemy while you were about to be born. I wasn't there with your parents when this all happened and I regret it so much. We received news that after you were born your mother sent you to a place far away from the battleground so you could be saved and she fought alongside your father. However, they lost their lives in that fight. I tried to find you everywhere but it was as if you disappeared from this land. Sixty days ago, when you went to give a sample of your blood to get an AI watch, it matched DNA with your mother, and finally, I was able to find you. She explained with a sorrowful voice and her eyes were shedding tears as if the people she was telling about meant a lot to her. Rio, whose eyes were full of bitterness, now had red eyes. His face was decorated with the salty droplets from his moist eyes that came out on their own. He was crying for the people he blamed. But now he realized his mistake. They died in order to save me and I blamed them my whole life. Saying that his buttocks collided with the floor as he sat there and tears flowed down his cheeks while his shoulder dropped in sadness. Seeing him sit on the ground, the blue-haired lady sat beside him and took him in her embrace. She caressed his hair like a mother and let him silently tear. Her heart ached to see him cry but she understood it was necessary to put down the heavy weight of emotions. They stayed in that position until Rio's heart felt light from the mental pain that he released through the tears. Seeing him relax she let go of him. He asked with his doubtful gaze, what's your relationship with them? You can say I was closest to your mother. She twisted her words. Still, why would a friend of my mother treat me like her own child? He looked at her with eyes filled with suspicion. You're her shadow, Rio. You are her last souvenir for me. And, your question, why would a friend of your mother treat you like her own child? That's because I don't love you any less than my own child. She said with a loving tone. Why is that? He scrunched his eyebrows. Get the top 10 ranking in the military school tournament next year and you will have your answers. You can think of me as your godmother. Now, go to your room and I'll bring you some food then you can sleep. She flicked his forehead with a warm smile and stood up to go out of her room. He sat there for a little while then walked out of the room to go to the fourth room on the second floor. This was the room given to him by his second mother. He opened the door and went to lie down on his king-sized bed on the left side of the room. Moonlight was reflecting on the window's glasses which were behind the bed. The room was lit up with an AI smart bulb that would turn on and off by a mere command and it brightened the room very well. It also had the option to change the color of light and brightness. There was a desk and study table at the corner of the wall and a comfy blue couch with a round table on the right side of the room. There was a white reclining chair in a pod shape with a head mounting device that would cover head to eyes. It was a VR pod but it was more expensive than the one Rio had seen on TVs. The bedroom had two rooms attached to it. One was a private portal capsule and the other was a bathroom. A private portal capsule would require an average person a fortune to afford and they might not be able to buy it even after working their whole life but it wasn't a problem for a powerhouse like the Haven Glow family. After 15 minutes, his door opened and his second mother entered the room. Behind her, was a maid, who followed along and looked to be in her twenties. Her brown hair came to her pale shoulder. Rio ignored her appearance and focused on the cart that she was pushing. For bowls filled with food and two plates as well as silver utensils. Nancy, place them on the table near the couch. His second mother said. 
Nancy pushed the cart to the table and set up two plates with silver utensils. Magic. Rio, come or it will get cold. I cooked it earlier so it's still hot. The blue haired lady said while taking a seat on the couch. Rio, who sat up on the bed by their sudden arrival, walked to the couch before asking, Why are there two plates? Madam hasn't had her dinner for three weeks since no news of yours came even after seven days. She was forced to have her morning meals by younger Miss Rose, but Madam would still skip her dinner. Nancy blurted it out in a polite manner. Her madam glared at her to not speak what she shouldn't but Rio was taken aback by what he heard. He didn't say anything and sat beside her. He would only get his answer if he got top 10 in the next year's tournament. Nancy placed food on both of their plates and they started eating. Food is delicious. He mumbled which caused a smile to bloom on his second mother's face. After dinner, Nancy dragged the cart out of the room. The second mother and Rio were left in the room. She was waiting for Nancy to leave so she could talk to Rio alone. There is something you need to know. It wasn't me who arranged your engagement with Nyla. It was my husband. He and Nyla's father are close friends but Nyla's mom had already arranged her engagement with her friend's son. So when she found out that her husband arranged it with you, she berated him and he had no option but to break the engagement. It wasn't because you have no innate talent. The media has the nature to twist the news to make it spicier. The Malin family can't reveal this news to outsiders as they fear the old men of our family. They will carry out their engagement after a year by the time my father doesn't value this matter much. His second mother explained. No problem. I don't really care about that marriage. He said with a mysterious smile. Does he already have someone he likes? That would be a big problem. The second mother raised her eyebrows seeing his happy expression. You must be tired from the struggle caused by that beast not letting you come back. Rest now, little Rio. She said in a loving voice and caressed his hair before kissing his forehead. I'm not a child. He complained as she kissed his forehead like a little child. Although he complained Rio's heart felt warm as he saw her affectionate actions and motherly love in her eyes. You will remain a little child for me even after you have kids of your own age. She teased him one last time before leaving and closing the door behind her. He was speechless but probably that's how his real mother would also do. So he gave up and accepted it. Rio laid down on his bed and thought about the things that have happened since he returned. He wasn't able to sleep as he slept in the land of Azura and it was still day there. He closed his eyes and tried resting. He could hear his heartbeat and breathing. I can finally sleep on a comfortable bed but I don't know why I'm missing that couch. He complained inwardly. Hew. A familiar voice sounded. Leah? He jolted awake and sat up on the bed and looked around him. He didn't find anyone around him and astonishment engulfed him as he realized the voice sounded in his mind. This telepathy even works here. He asked back. What do you take heaven's blessing for? Of course, it would work. She responded back. He was dazed and asked with a grin, are you already missing your sexy husband? Are you missing bonking your head by your loving wifey? She teased him. Don't remind me of that. My shoulders are still aching. He complained. Did anyone doubt your story about not being able to come back for almost a month? Leah asked in a worried voice and changed the topic. She was thinking about it since he left via the portal. I don't think they doubt it. My story doesn't have a loophole but my second mother wouldn't allow me to return any time soon since that beast might come back to trap me or harm me. I'll have to find another portal capsule that doesn't inform others that I went to the land of Azura. There is one in my room right now but it would be a problem if my adopted family find out that I disappeared from my room. He explained it. How will you return then? She asked with a saddened voice. My classes are starting in two days then I'll try to look for a way to find a portal capsule. Buying a new private capsule portal and setting up in a rented room is better but I don't have that much money. Rio said with a bittersweet smile via telepathy. He didn't hear her response after he said that it wasn't possible to come back. Don't worry. Worst case scenario I'll just come via the school's portal capsule and return in a few days to tell them I found a new shelter or maybe the beast died. He spoke with a determined voice hoping Lia would speak again. Who is this second mother? Her questioning voice asked him what he wanted to hear. Oh. She is someone related to my real parents. Rio started telling her all the incidents from start to finish including the matter of the Malin family and his engagement with Nyla that were broken because of her mother. They talked for hours until Lia sent him to sleep so he wouldn't feel tired for the next day. Morning arrived with a nostalgic event as a glass of water was poured on his face and he hurriedly opened his eyes to complain to Lia. But realization drowned him as he remembered he was no longer in the land of Azura. A girl who looked to be 14 to 15 was standing near his bed with an empty glass. Her shoulder-length blue hair was tied behind with a pink ribbon. She looked a lot like his second mother. 
Her face was like a doll and her eyes looked mischievous as if she would cause trouble. She was 165 centimeters tall, which made her shorter than both her mother and her adopted brother. Wake up. Mom wants you to go down for breakfast. She said with an annoyed voice. Can't you wake me up like a good little sister? He complained. I would but you're not my brother. And I don't like you even a little bit. My hatred for you soared because mom didn't eat because of you. I wish you were captured by the Azuras or killed by that beast. She said with bitterness in her voice and eyes full of hatred. Ryo clenched his fist hearing her words but he didn't say anything. He would have talked back and berated her if his second mother didn't show him motherly affection last night. She is just a child. He was now burdened by her love and forgave this little girl. She walked out of the room and Ryo went to the bathroom to wash up. After five minutes, he went downstairs and found his second mother and her daughter waiting for him. Ryo, come sit here. She beckoned him and patted the chair beside her. The girl beside her gave him a hateful glare as he walked to them and sat on the left side of the blue-haired lady. The second mother was sitting in the middle of both children. Nancy proceeded to serve them food and they started eating. When will big sister come back? His sister asked. Rio knew it wasn't a question directed to him so he kept eating his food. Lily is busy with your grandfather at the shelter. They might not return anytime soon. Don't worry, Rose. Next year, you will turn 16 and you can go to the land of Azura. She said to her daughter. They were done eating as Nancy cleaned the table. Rose also left the house as she finished her meal. The second mother's green handbag was on her lap. She brought out two things from the little bag and put them on the table. One was a rectangular golden card with a tag, Grand Du Garden, of his school ID size. Another was a cell phone the size of his palm. Magic. This is the access card to your apartment at the Grand Du Garden on the school campus. It will be tiresome for you to come back home every day. It will save you time and energy. She moved the VIP card towards him after saying these words. Rio hesitated but then took it and inspected the card. It was covered with a gold-plated cover. Keep this phone as you don't have one. I have saved my number, Rose's number, and Nancy's number. If you need anything or face any problem just inform any one of us. She took the phone and handed it to him. Thank you. He said with a gratitude-filled smile. Don't show formalities between us. You're not a stranger. She said and caressed his hair. My classes will be starting soon. Can I return today? He asked her as he thought it would be better to go back and find another portal capsule. You can return today if you want but I would be happy if you stayed with us until school starts, she showed her reluctance and said with a hint of sadness in her voice. Okay. I'll stay then. He didn't want to make her sad and it was only two days so he agreed to stay. Tell me what your shelter terrains look like. I'll send people to locate it so we can evacuate you to our shelter. She said in a nonchalant voice. Rio explained a structure of shelter that he built up in his mind. She made a phone call and asked someone to look for his shelter's location. Two days passed as usual. The second mother would come to talk to him and they would eat together along with Rose. He talked to Lia when night enveloped this land and Rose woke him up in the morning with the same method she used for the first time. The red racing car roared and it burst towards the school gate. Students and teachers' attention was focused on the car as it entered the gate. It followed the road towards the large teaching building and suddenly came to a stop. There were a lot of students as the class started today for the first year. They were wearing casual new dresses which showed they all wanted to give a good expression for their first class to their teachers and fellow classmates. It also showed that a formal school dress wasn't suggested except for special days like the first day of school. They were entering the teaching building but when they heard the commotion they turned back to look at the car that arrived. It was known that even the headmaster wasn't allowed to drive their vehicle inside the campus and stop directly in front of the teaching building. There was a parking lot made for keeping vehicles of students and teachers. A beautiful lady with blue hair came out of the car along with a crimson-haired boy. Look, she is Aaliyah Havenglow. She looks similar to one of the hero statues in the school's monument building. Don't you know she is the younger sister of Amira Havenglow? Are you talking about the female hero who destroyed the Davrik's race in the last battle? Are there any other Amira Havenglow then? Who is that boy with her? He is the adopted son of the Havenglow family. I don't understand why he is so lucky to be adopted by one of the strongest families. The one whose engagement was broken by the Malin family because he had no innate talent? Yeah. Then how did he get admission in this school where they don't accept anyone with an innate talent below C rank? Don't you see who is standing beside him? Yeah, I get it now. Students murmured to themselves as the duo came out of the car. Do you want me to call the headmaster to help you with your first day of the new class? Aaliyah said like a doting mother. No, you shouldn't disturb the headmaster for little things. 
he gulped nervously as he heard this lady talking about making the headmaster do the tutorial for him. Okay, if little Rio feels shy then I won't. Don't forget to call me if you need anything. As if she read his mind she answered him. She hugged him in a dotting manner as if her child was going to a faraway place and won't meet her any time. He felt embarrassed as the students were looking at them. Students had their jaws almost touching the ground as they didn't expect an adopted child to be treated like the real one. Even most students' real mothers wouldn't show such love and affection for them in public. She went back inside the car and the engine roared. It burst out of the campus and sped away into the distance. Rio sighed in relief after she left. He was worried she would embarrass him more by treating him like a little child. He was in front of the teaching building, which was expanded by 100 meters alone. There were three floors as it was a three-story building. The first floor was for the first year, the second for the second year, and the third one was for the third year. There were many windows on the building's front. At the top of the building, there was a big board with the title tag, Golden Seal Military School. There were four sections each year and Rio was in section A. He moved towards the entrance of the first floor ignoring the crowd who were giving him looks of astonishment and contempt. He passed through the door and looked around to find his classroom. He saw stairs that led to a higher floor along with an elevator at the end of the building to go to the second floor. He saw a classroom with a signboard for Section D on the right side so he turned around to the left side where he found his classroom in Section A. Found it. He walked towards his classroom along with a few students who were already inside the building. The inside of the classroom was not like what he imagined. It was three times bigger than the classroom at his previous high school and this room was cylindrical. There were seats for students to sit in the center but around the rounded wall, there were many VR pods with reclining chairs. They didn't look as expensive as the one Rio had in his bedroom at Havenglow's house. Rio saw a few students were already in their seats busy talking to each other to get along on their first day of the class. He didn't recognize any of them so he went to sit on the last seat to avoid their gaze. Magic. After 15 minutes passed, all the students, which were 50 in number, had already taken their seats. A figure in a green dress entered the class. She was an enchanting young lady with brown hair and brown eyes that were filled with a proud look. She was not wearing a revealing dress but it was unable to hide her alluring body curves, especially her busty chest. She looked to be in her late twenties and her height was around 175 centimeters which made her taller than all the females present in the class. Hello, students. I'm Elena West, your new class teacher. I'll be handling the training classes as well as the theory classes you receive. Although there are two teachers normally assigned to two different subjects, your circumstances are special. In our class, we have three kids from the seven silver sword families of the Federation. So I was specially assigned for this class. Milena said and looked at the students who were looking in the direction of two girls who were sitting in the front row in different seats. Some of the students even turned around to look at Rio and whispered among themselves. Seven silver swords of the Federation included the Havenglow and Malin families. These families had at least one person at the Silver Stage, which made them listed in the Seven Silver Swords of the Federation. She continued, Every Monday will be a theory class of one hour which you cannot skip unless you're stuck in the land of Azura or have some emergency. Tuesday and Wednesday will be combat training where you will fight against beasts and bosses using your skills in the VR pod. The timing will depend on how much time you need to kill a beast at the Yellow Stage. It's an artificially designed virtual world to prepare you guys against the dangers in the land of Azuras. Killing a normal yellow rank beast will give you 1 point. If you have 20 points then you don't need to attend the class. It will reset on the first day of every new month. Most students were aware of the pattern of classes at the school. But there were some students who didn't know and Rio was one of them. I'll start with your first class with the basics. There are 5 stages among humans roots and beasts cores. Yellow, purple, black, red, and silver. Many of you may have already formed a root after absorbing your first yellow stage core. We, humans, ascend the stage of our roots by absorbing the cores we receive from killing a beast. You also get a beast soul when you kill these beasts. A person at the yellow stage cannot absorb a core from a beast of the purple stage or get a beast soul of a higher stage than themselves. If you have any questions you can ask me now. She explained about the roots and cores. She didn't mention the white stage and golden stage like Emperor Diane told me. It seems like humans haven't faced golden stage beasts yet. Rio thought inwardly. A student asked, teacher, if absorbing a core helps us ascend our core then why there aren't any shops for these cores and beast souls in our world? That way someone at the black stage could easily farm cores of lower stages. We could buy these cores to ascend our roots. A few students who knew the answer to his question laughed. There are two reasons. First is that these beast cores only stay for one hour and they vanish. 
The second reason is that the portal capsule doesn't let us carry things from the land of Azura to our world. For beast souls, it cannot be transferred outside the land of Azura. Whenever you try transferring these beast souls on earth they self-destruct. Nobody is able to find the reason why. Since we are talking about this topic, I want to clear you one more thing. If you try to carry any high-end devices, metals, or powerful weapons to the land of Azura, it will self-destruct as well while the white light envelopes you in the portal. It is one of the reasons why we cannot use our advanced invented weapons of earth on these beasts from the land of Azura. Milena explained with a stiff voice. Her class continued for an hour then she left the class and let students go for the day. Rio walked out of the teaching building and took a path that led to the north direction where Grand Dew Garden was. It was in the northeast of the school campus beside the teacher's quarter building. Hey hey, stop. A figure suddenly came in front of him and stopped him in his tracks. Rio was taken aback as she suddenly came on his way. But he was even more surprised by her beauty. She wasn't as beautiful as Lia but she could rival Helia easily. Her red bouffant dress was blooming her ravishing beauty. Her doll-like face was blossomed by a bright smile that was accompanied by her cherry-like red lips and green eyes that were beautiful as the glittering stars. Her mid-back length hair which was magenta in color fell down on her shapely twin peaks that were a little revealing due to her red dress. She was giving off an aura of a happy, easygoing person with whom you will never be bored. Why? He asked after understanding the situation. Her beauty could have made him dazed but he was used to being with Lia so it was not a big deal for him anymore. I'm Nyla, your ex-fiancé. I need to talk to you alone. Can we have a coffee together so we can talk? She said in a requesting way. He felt a little bad as he found out this was the girl whose father rejected him. Sorry, I'm busy and I don't want to talk to you. Saying that he started moving away. She came again in front of him and said, just 10 minutes, please? I want to clear up some misunderstandings. What plan is she fabricating? He raised his eyes at her and agreed in the end, okay. You seem to be going to the Grand Dew Garden. Let's have our conversation at my place then. She spoke with a cheerful voice. Magic. He wasn't familiar with that place so he followed her. They passed the teaching building area and went deeper into the campus in the north direction. There was a pond in the middle which was reflecting the blue sky on its surface. There were yellow flowers around the pond and also on the path that led to the right side. Nyla walked towards the direction where colorful flowers were planted as if welcoming the people who entered. Rio could smell the floral aroma of flowers that were flowing around the moist air of the pond. A relaxed smile blossomed on his face as he entered the Grand Dew Garden with Nyla. There were five two-story buildings present at the Grand Dew Garden. They looked stylish and modern, built with big windows on the front. Nyla walked to the first one near the pond. There was only one door to enter the building, which was on the very left side. She opened it with a gold-plated access card similar to the one Rio received from his second mother. There was a narrow space in front of them. A stair was erected upwards and a door was placed on the right side of the wall. She said, this stair will lead you to my apartment on the second floor. This door is for the empty first-floor apartment. I hope my sister doesn't get into this building. Why don't you want your own sister to be your neighbor? He asked with a doubtful voice because she is a demon. You would have heard of the evil stepsister and stepmother stereotype, right? She spoke with a hint of amusement in her voice. Rio understood what she meant as he was familiar with it from the stories he read in school. They took the stairs and went to the second floor. Nyla unlocked the door to her apartment with the access card and she entered. Rio hesitated to enter as it was a girl's apartment. He wasn't used to this kind of situation. He was feeling shy because Nyla wasn't even his wife like Lia. Come inside, don't be shy, Rio. You were almost my half-husband. She sarcastically invited him as she saw his hesitation. He rolled his eyes at her and entered finally by the little push Nyla gave him with her words. The center of the hall had two couches opposite each other with a round table in the middle. On the left side was a rack in the wall with some kitchen utensils and a table in front of it with some cooking appliances. The right side had a window that showed the view of a pond with beautiful flowers outside. Behind the couch, there were two doors. One of the doors was open and showed the bedroom inside. There was a bed in his sight with a white bed sheet that had purple flower patterns. A teddy bear was placed near her purple pillow. There was a door at the end of the bedroom which was probably an attached bathroom. At the corner of the kitchen rack and bedroom, there was another door that reminded him of the portal capsule room in his room in Havenglow's house. If I also have a similar room then my problem might be solved. Does everyone get a private portal capsule in their room? He asked her. Nah, only we at Grand Du Garden have them. You will also have one in your apartment. She said with a nonchalant voice. You should take a seat on the sofa. I'll make coffee for us. Give me two minutes. 
she hovered her left half in front of her by folding all her fingers except the middle and index while her face kept a sweet smile which caused her eyes to take a crescent shape. If I didn't meet Lia I might have been charmed by her elegance and cute gestures, magic. He took a seat on the couch while Nyla went to the kitchen table on the left side. After two minutes, she brought a tray with some cookies and two cups of coffee. She sat on the couch opposite him before handed him a cup of coffee and placing the tray on the round table. She looked at Rio who was glaring at her as if asking her to speak and not extending this meeting long. Don't look at me like that. I didn't put anything funny in the coffee to cause you to go on many toilet trips. You can trust me. She said with a proud smile. He was speechless by her process of thought. Ten minutes have passed long ago. Should I leave then if you're done? He said with a flat tone. What ten minutes, twenty minutes? I'm your fellow schoolmate. Can't you talk without remembering the grudges of the past? She said in an apologetic tone but a smile was still on her face. He rubbed the middle of his forehead hearing her logic to be friendly with her. Okay, don't be impatient. At least drink that coffee I made for us. I'll start then. She indicated by moving her eyes to the cup in his hand. Slurp. He took a sip from the cup. It's really good. The coffee was creamy and sweet. It was perfectly made. Engagement with you was arranged without my agreement and it was broken without my agreement as well. My stepmother doesn't like me so she wants to send me away from the family as soon as possible. I was less worried when I heard dad arranged my marriage with you because I thought you would understand me more than the son of my stepmother's best friend, who is a playboy. Her best friend wanted her son to be married to my stepmother's daughter. So instead of Talia, who is her biological daughter, she wants to send me to marry her best friend's playboy son. Nyla explained in a sad voice. This was the first time since he met her when she was not being cheerful or happy. It was as if the glimmering full moon was going through an eclipse. Why would I understand you? He asked her in a nonchalant voice before taking a sip from the cup. When I was born my mother passed away so my stepmother and stepsister told me from a small age that I killed my mother. Father doesn't like me much either. Although he doesn't say it on his face, he agrees with his wife and daughter. From my father's side, my grandmother is the only one that loves me. Grandfather stays busy at the shelter and he likes Talia more because she is at the purple stage like me even though she is younger than me by a year. She spoke in a down voice as her gaze was looking down at the cup of coffee in her hand. I'm sorry. He apologized as he heard about her sad past. You don't have to say sorry. She smiled and came out of the eclipse moment she was going through because of remembering the sad memories. He felt better seeing her happy face as it brightened the heart of people around her by just looking at that smile. Are you still mad at me for breaking the engagement? She asked him with a lower voice as if asking a child to forgive her. Nope. It's fine. I'll leave then. He put the cup on the table and got ready to stand up. Wait. I haven't finished the main topic. She said in a hurried voice which made him halt his action and made him stay on the couch. What now? He asked. Please don't get mad after what I'm going to ask you. She hesitated and calmed herself by taking a deep breath. He wondered what she wanted to say to him. He waited for her to speak. Will you marry me, please? She requested in a pleading voice while hands pressed together and palms touching each other with a slight bow. She dropped a landmine that caused his mind to go into chaos, he was flabbergasted. As if a hammer was struck on his head, he was shaken and was wondering if the girl had gone insane. Her question made an awkward silence between them. Please Rio. She asked while her hand was still in that gesture of hands pressed together and palms touching each other with a slight bow. Her words brought him back from the shocked phase he was going through. But why? He asked while narrowing his eyes at her. I don't want to marry that playboy. She said in a dissatisfied voice while her hand no longer maintained the requesting gesture. Just marry the one you like. What's the problem? He asked with a puzzled face. I won't be able to marry another boy as you know how powerful my family is. They wouldn't let me marry someone from a smaller family. Stepmother wouldn't let me marry in other strong families as she can force dad to break the engagement with even the Haven Glow family. She said with a bitter tone and tilted her head downwards to place it on her open palms. And why would she agree if you marry me? A questioning look was painted on his face as he wasn't able to understand her. She tilted her head upwards and said, we were once about to be engaged so if we get married it will appear natural to the public and our family reputation won't be ruined. Also, my stepmother or family won't be able to do anything to you as you're from the Haven Glow family that all the other six Silver Swords families fear. He understood her logic and he might have thought to help her but he was already a married person. There was no chance he would associate with another woman behind Leah's back. Oh, I get it. But I can't marry you. I hope you find another solution. Take care. He stood up to leave. But why? She asked him with a saddened look. 
You can't just ask someone randomly to marry you because you don't want to marry the person your family wants you. I have no connection with you so don't involve me in your matters. He didn't want to be rude but he really couldn't marry her. It was better to be harsh with his words so she doesn't chase him and give up here. Rio, can we be friends? She asked although she didn't hope he would agree as he was way too rude with his words just a few seconds ago. She still thought to try and ask him. But an unexpected answer came. Okay. He mumbled and realized something. Technically, she would be my first friend. This word seemed so foreign to me. He sighed inwardly. Magic. Thanks. She smiled cheerfully while her eyes flickered with a mischievous glint. One day I will conquer you, Rio Haven Glow. I promise you will be mine. She dressed in this manner and wore a little revealing dress for her bosom to charm him but her plan failed. Not only Rio wasn't seduced by her alluring body he didn't even look at her like other boys would do. Other men would make her uncomfortable by staring at her body but this boy was totally different. She didn't see a single hint of lust in his eyes. She was moved by his charming behavior as a gentleman. Hopefully I can go now. He asked her for permission this time as she made him stop a few times when he wanted to leave. That's so sweet of you. I wish to keep you here but will you stay? She teased him. He shook his head and started going towards the door. Nyla followed behind him while taking the cookies in her hand. Rio, you didn't eat these. She handed him. He took it and asked, why are you following me? I'm your friend so I'm going to help you settle in your room. She said in a sweet manner while closing the door behind them. Does a friend have to do that? He frowned and ate the cookies she gave him while continuing to walk. Show me your access card then we can find your apartment. She asked while stopping at the outside of the first building they came out of. Rio took out his access card and showed it to her. She took it from his hand and a smile blossomed on her face which caused Rio to shudder. You're not just my friend now. She said while entering the first building where her apartment was. What do you mean and why are you going back without giving me my access card to my apartment? His voice sounded from behind. He followed her inside the building with a puzzled look. You're also my neighbor and your apartment is on the first floor. She spoke and opened the door of the apartment on the first floor. Is this a coincidence? Rio was surprised as he heard her saying they had an apartment in the same building. They entered the hall which was similar to Nyla's room. Why does it feel like those scenes from a TV series where couples enter their new house together? Rio was relieved to see a door for the portal capsule at the corner of the room between the kitchen rack and bedroom. She went to open the bedroom door as if it was her own apartment. Rio followed behind her. A king-sized bed was placed without any mattress or blanket. There was a study table to the side of the wall along with a window and a cupboard. There was also a VR pod similar to one he saw in the classroom. Why do we have VR pods in our room? Isn't that very expensive to give to every student? He asked her while pointing to the VR pod. Our room? She asked him with an amusing tone and her eyes were filled with mischief. Our room? She asked him with an amusing tone and her eyes were filled with mischief. I didn't mean that. I mean you may also have one in your room and I have one here. He said hurriedly as he saw her misunderstanding him. You know we can make your statement true? But anyway, VR pods are only for a special students who live in Grand Dew Garden. We can attend our battle training classes from our rooms. You only need to go for theory classes. She explained in a gentle manner. I need to bring back my bags from the school office. The second mother told me she would send it there in an hour. Rio said to her as he saw the cupboard. Okay, let's meet here in 10 minutes. Saying that she left before Rio. He couldn't understand this girl as he saw her going outside the building. He caught up to her. Why meet again in 10 minutes? He asked her as he walked alongside her. Why are you reluctant to meet your sweet friend? It's a bad habit, Rio. She said in a sarcastic tone thinking he would understand her sarcasm. He scratched his head awkwardly as he thought it might be wrong between friends. She found it amusing as she saw his reaction. They walked together to the school building while Nyla showed him places and introduced them to him. She went towards the shopping area on the right side while Rio entered the office building. After 10 minutes, he was back in his apartment and Nyla followed behind him. He placed the bag near the cupboard and asked, what now? Let's wait a few minutes and you will know. She said in a mysterious voice. She moved towards the cupboard and opened it. She started unpacking his stuff and placing them in the cupboard. Rio shook his head looking at her action and went to check the portal capsule. He opened the door at the corner of the kitchen table and bedroom door. He went inside and found there was nothing inside but it was similar to the portal capsule at the school gate. He tapped his watch that rang with some notification sounds and synced with the portal as its door closed. A text appeared on the screen of the AI watch with the letters, teleport. Oh, this works the same way. He didn't take the next step and proceeded to open the door of the portal capsule to come out with a happy look. 
however, he remembered something and ran towards his bedroom. What he saw made his face turn red. Nyla was almost done with setting up his cupboard but she was currently putting his underwear inside. She turned around and saw his beet red face. What happened? She asked as if not knowing the reason. Nothing. He didn't say it as it was embarrassing to talk about it. Nyla placed his empty bag in the cupboard as well and closed it. Ding dong. A bell rang in the room which indicated. That someone was at the door. Finally, it has arrived. Let's get it. She said and moved towards the door of the hall. Magic. What arrived? He asked her with questioning eyes and followed behind her. She opened the door and there were two boys at the door in staff costumes. They were carrying something rectangular. Carry it inside and place them in the bedroom. Nyla beckoned them. They followed her instructions and went to the bedroom. They unpacked the package. It was a black mattress, a white bedsheet with purple flower patterns, and a purple pillow similar to the one Nyla had in her room. Nyla instructed them to place the mattress on the bed after which they left. Rio was watching from the side with a dazed look. Why do I feel like I'm in your bedroom and it's not mine anymore? He mumbled. Who says mine and yours between friends? She shook her head. She placed the bedsheet on the bed and put the pillow at the head of the bed. It's all done. If you want to have a drink or coffee or need help you can just call me on my phone and check if I'm in school. If I don't respond, it means I'm in the land of Azura. She said to him in a nonchalant voice. Thanks. He said with a smile. You're welcome. Now give me your phone. She asked him while hovering her palm in front of him. He took out his phone and gave it to her. She dialed a number and saved it with her name before returning it back to him. She took out her phone which had a missed call from his number. She saved it with his name and a heart emoji beside it which she didn't let Rio see. All done. She handed him the phone. I will go now, see you tomorrow, Rio. She walked out of the room without waiting for his reply. I want to ask why we need to meet again tomorrow but then she would say it's bad manners between friends. He sighed inwardly and closed the door in the hall. Ding. His phone screen flashed as a message arrived and caused him to look at it. Hey wanna have lunch together, magic. It was not even two minutes and she sent him a text message. Rio read her name on the phone screen which was saved as, Nyla, with a heart emoji. I won't be able to understand these girls. He typed a text and sent her. Okay, sure. It was going to be lunchtime soon so he thought it's better to go with her as he wasn't familiar with the school campus. Ding. Meet me near the office building. He read her replied text and left the room to meet her as she asked. The second mother had told him that he could use his phone to pay the money if he bought anything at school so he didn't forget to take it with him. He used the app to log in into his bank account where he had money he inherited from his grandfather. Even though his second mother opened a separate bank account for him where she sent funds every month, he didn't want to use Havenglow's money. There were two reasons. First, because he didn't need it. Second, he didn't want to take favors from the Haven Glow family. It would be different if it was only the second mother who gave him her own money but she was giving Rio money from their family business. What if they come to kill Lia in the future? What if tomorrow they turn out to be people who killed my parents? He hadn't seen tomorrow or the future so he didn't want to feel a burden if a day came when he had to fight them putting his life on the line. Cloud was covering the sun as it was around noon. There were students walking around the campus. He found Nyla waiting for him near the office building. She was carrying a purple hobo bag which wasn't with her in the morning. Let's go. I've booked a private room in the restaurant. She said in a cheerful voice. Okay. He walked alongside her. They went to the shopping area that was inside the campus on the right side of the office building. It was crowded right now as other students were also going to the school canteen which was part of the shopping site. There were many buildings in the shopping area but the one Nyla took him to was a three-story building. The restaurant had a board with the tag, Star Melting Pot Restaurant. The building was painted blue as it appeared elegant and stood out among other buildings. They went to the third floor, as the first and second floors were for the general public and private rooms were on the third floor. There were eight chambers made on the third floor and each one of them was not visible from the outside. She went to the third chamber along with him. Inside, there were two comfortable green chairs with a big table in the middle. There was a glass window near the table that was showing the blue sky outside. Nyla and Rio sat opposite each other and she took one of the menus from the table. It was like a smartphone with a big screen. You just had to select the food you wanted to eat from the different categories as there were pictures and descriptions of each of them. Pick what you want to eat. Today's lunch will be on my account. She said while opening the menu. Order the food for two people you will choose for yourself and I'll pay for my food. He refused her offer. Who says, I'll pay for my food between friends? You can just take me out for dinner next time. She urged him with an adorable smile. Inviting the naive prey into her honey trap. 
she even planned a dinner with him just because he refused to take her offer for eating on her money. He didn't say anything and waited for her to pick. She took his silence as a yes for dinner next time. After five minutes, their food arrived. Tomorrow will be my first battle training class. He said to her while they were eating. Are you nervous? She paused to look at him. Nah. I just haven't used a VR pod before. He said with a bittersweet smile. That's not a problem. Let's finish lunch and I'll give you a demo of the VR pod. She said in an excited voice. Have you met your fiancé? He was wondering about the fiancé she was talking to him about earlier. Not after the engagement has fixed but before the engagement was decided I used to see Reuben in the land of Azura and even when he came to our house with his mother, Nyla said with a hint of bitterness in her voice. Are they strong? He asked. Nah, they are not as strong as our family. Aster family only owns one red stage shelter in the land of Azura. They don't have a silver stage in their family like the seven silver sword families. This is one of the reasons they want to pull the Malin family's daughter to their side so they can use the free ride from a higher level family. She explained. Why am I getting bad premonitions from just hearing this name? Red Stage Shelter, Aster Family, Rio mumbled this name and engraved it in his memory. He felt an intuition that it might come in handy in the future. I really don't like that Reuben. Recently, I got a call from him but I didn't receive it. His family also lives in Vera City so I don't like going back home even when I want to go to my grandmother. Nyla said in an annoyed voice. What are his age and innate talent rank? He asked with a stiff voice. He is 21, be innate talent rank and purple stage. Dad was saying he will help him reach the black stage before my engagement with him. She looked downhearted. Such a talented fellow you have for your fiancé. He might change after you marry him. They say love can change a person. I believe you can change him with your love and care. He spoke with an envious tone. Not because he was her fiancé but because he had innate talent and a family who adored him. Unlike others, he had neither of them. If love can really change a person then I would want to melt your heart. Instead of wasting my life with him, I would rather wait for you. Nyla said with a happy tone. He is more talented than me. I don't even have innate talent and you don't know when the Haven Glow family would kick me out. I'm nobody. He said emotionlessly. Nyla stood up and looked into his eyes as if thinking something. Rio was taken aback seeing her stand all of a sudden after he berated himself. What's she planning now, he thought inwardly and stared into her eyes which were gazing at him. Don't fool me, Rio. I know you're saying these things so I lose interest in you but I won't give up. She leaned to Rio's side slowly, which caused Rio's heart to become unstable. She passed his lips and came closer to his ear. Is she a vampire or something coming this closer? He could feel her hot breath on his skin. Then I want this nobody, Nyla whispered in a coquettish voice and sat back in her seat as a sweet smile bloomed on her face. He didn't reply to her and focused on his food. They finished their meal and Nyla paid the bill using a card she had in her purple hobo bag. They came to Rio's apartment and went to his bedroom where the VR pod was. She fixed her clothes and hair as if preparing for something grand. She cleared her throat with an ahem and turned her eyes towards Rio. Military schools and the outside world play a popular game Kingdom of Beast. This game lets you fight different ranked beasts people have encountered in the land of Azuras. It even has boss mode which lets you fight some beasts bosses from each stage that you can't find in the land of Azura. There is also an open arena for duel and team matches. But this game has no use except for school classes, tournaments, and sharpening your battle skills. This VR helmet you see, can record all attributes of your body. Anything you do in the real world with your skills you can do in the game. Magic. The only downside is that it can't record your abilities and attributes to the master server. It gets deleted when you put the VR helmet down. She explained about the VR pod that was in front of them. She said, go put it on your head, I'll guide you. Rio moved towards the pod and lay on the white reclining chair. He put on the head mounting device that covered his eyes, which was the VR helmet. Press the start button and the login screen will come up. You need to make an account using your AI watch as it will automatically sync when you select create an account. This will send you to the character creation menu. There, you can modify your avatar and set an in-game name. Then you're ready to go for the next step, her sweet voice sounded beside him. He touched the start button on the helmet and his AI watch flashed. An AI voice sounded in his mind. You are now connected to the VR helmet. Option with the, create an account, title floated in front of his vision. He selected it with a thought. He saw many colorful parallel lines like light running in front of him and the next second he was in a white room. His body was displayed in front of him. There was an option to modify the height, skin tone, hairstyle, hair color, tattoos, and armor. Rio just took a preset battle armor that was fully black and a white mask that hid his face completely. 
It had blue stripes going from above the eyes to down below the jaw which made it look quite stylish. After picking what he wanted, he selected, confirm. A message appeared in front of him. Select a name. He typed, Rio. Not available. Try again. What should I pick? Maybe red hair hero? Not available. Try again. That is also not available. Okay, let's hope this works. Not available. Try again. 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 Your username has been set to Eastwind. After failing continuously to find a name he wanted he finally saw the message that released him from his annoyance. Eastwind had many meanings but Rio knew two of them. First was the destruction of the wicked. The second one was a frightening force that set down waste to all in its way as it hunts down the unworthy and plucks them from their root. Finally this is done, it was unexpected for nobody to pick this unique name. Rio sighed in relief as the name got accepted in the character creation menu. He was transported to another empty room with white walls after those colorful parallel line light animations happened in front of him. There were different options floating on the sides but he decided to inform Nyla first. I created a character. He spoke to Nyla as he walked around the empty room in the VR game. What's your username in the game? She asked in a curious voice. Ads by Pub Future. Eastwind without space he mumbled. Okay, wait here. I'll go to my room and log in. I'll send you a friend request so don't forget to accept it. She said and walked out of the room at a fast pace without waiting for his reply. After two minutes, a notification came and a message appeared in front of Rio while he was waiting in the empty room. One new friend request. Purple Fairy wants to be your friend. Accept slash decline. Is Purple her favorite? He selected accept as he guessed who it could be. You are now friends with Purple Fairy. You have been invited by Purple Fairy to join her world? Accept slash decline. Except. The scene around him changed and he was transported to another empty space. He saw a figure waving their hand at him who was standing 20 meters apart. She was wearing purple armor and a white ribbon was tied to her silky magenta hair. They both moved towards each other. Oh boy, your cool looking crimson hair was already making my heartbeat go on a rampage. Now, this white mask is adding a layer of mystery around you. It is forcing me to have a crush on you. You're slaying this young lady's heart with your bewitching looks. Heaven won't forgive you, Eastwind. Nyla said in a sarcastic sorrowful voice and put the back of her palm on her forehead in a dramatic manner while inclining her head with closed eyes in heaven's direction which made her look like a bullied girl by our dear Rio.